Hold on, I'm not ready. Oh, too late. It's <laughs> it's going. <laughs> Welcome everyone to episode four of Bros of All People. We have a very special guest today. Dave, cool, handsome guy, can also ride a skateboard. He is here today to answer <laughs> just, all just of so your don't get us. questions. <laughs> Thank you. Just so you don't get us mixed up. <laughs> really good, guys. Yeah. yeah. So uh, today, Dave's Dave's. Johnny. Walker. All right, yeah, yeah. We got we got alcohol, so we got Johnny Walker Green Level. Yeah. Green Level. But Nathan, you're Dave on the same time zone as me. It's only noon. It's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> that all the alcoholics say, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> normally, <laughs> normally we're doing this on like a Sunday, so it's not a big deal. But today being Friday, this this is all I'm getting. A poor. But uh, yeah, Johnny Walker Green Label. This is all. It's a blended, so fifteen. All of them are at least fifteen years old. All the blends going here. There's at least four, but I know there's more. Um, it's a little smoky. It's a little sweet. Um, I was just smelling it as we were talking. It's definitely got like a malty kind of like the. Have you ever had the the malt balls? Skateboard malt day. Ball? Yeah, the malt balls, like the malt with the the crunchy malt balls with the chocolate on the outside. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I know you're not yeah. comparing it to that. No, 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 no. It's like on the inside, that maltiness, that flavor, not the chocolate flavor. Man, I don't taste. Oh, what are those called? It's not milk duds. Whoppers. You're talking about whoppers. Yeah, yeah whoppers. Yeah. That's what it is. This is yeah, not yeah. real. This this tastes okay. Well, you're the expert. I just I taste whiskey, and well, let me just do it. one sec. <laughs> I, I mean, it's good, and do you get the you know smoke it's whiskey, it? but it's whiskey you can drink without adding stuff to it. That that'll, that'll that's my analysis. You, of it. Do you get the smoke? There's a bit of smoke, you know, a little bit. Not like a crazy, not like in like an art bag, but like a you know. Mm -hmm. a, a it's kind of it's kind of weird to drink over the internet. No, <laughs> nobody there to drink. But is there any other way to be on the internet? I don't know. It's where <laughs> it's routine for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm getting I'm getting the uh like the honeysuckle the I'm getting a lot of red apple on this one. But it's like if you were doing red apple and honeysuckle again faintly on the beach with the smoke from a distant fire because the smoke is light on this one. Dave, is this like an SI thing? Every time we do like a Feels whiskey, like a, yeah. he's like, I taste yeah, yeah 1970s yeah. uh disco bands with the slight yeah. Amount of sweet potato. I'm like, man, how do you do that? I see that, especially with the SIFIs. They'll, uh, the, you know, their, their physical experience, you know, with, with SE, we're kind of like cool, then we're just running on to the next <laughs> whiskey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Even Wendy, though, even Wendy's just like, yep, tastes like whiskey. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's just so, an experience thing then. Right. This will be SIFI somewhere else, you know. Yeah. Some, yeah. some physical uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's All right. stuff. But we anyway, got a drinking so, buddy as well, oh. Christian. I got some rum. To have you got some rum. That'll work. That'll work. Dave, you're not a drinker, I guess. You don't like. I think you don't. No, drink, no, no. Not. I, I've been doing a lot of kombuchas. Um, I, I did wine good. for a while. Yeah, I, I did wine for a while, but I just had like too many headache issues and stuff. Oh yeah. No, so, yeah, yeah. I don't do that. Yeah. You got yeah, like a sulfide allergy or something like that, or I don't know. I might have been having the wrong wine. I think I might have got like red wine and and uh, uh, the, the clear wine mixed up. I think I, I should have gone away from the red wine. Mm -hmm. I think the red wine causes more headaches rather yeah, than the other one. Yeah, yeah. But but usually these days, like my, my days are too fast. I don't really have I don't really have like consume time. It takes some some downtime off, you know. But mm -hmm. uh so so yeah, no, no drinking lately. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. I mean, no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's, awesome. it's healthy. I've got so I Nate, I think you you've had a topic, I guess, planned for a while that was like a pretty meaningful thing for you the, do you want to start us out with that or sure how you feeling? yeah uh hey, funny you're being the blasty one today that's good you got alcohol that's you know that was, <laughs> you know, so yeah press the blast comes out <laughs> <laughs> um one of the things i've been thinking about is just and i actually i sent gave a, a a quick clip that kind of touches on it um with uh tony robbins but for the last I don't know, two, three months, um, just this idea of the cost of what it, or the cost of becoming a new person. What does it take to become a new person? What are the costs associated with that? What are the, um, maybe the downsides that we perceive in our minds, uh, maybe even real downsides that occur, but aren't really downsides in the long run, <clears throat> excuse me. 
And and just talking about that, um, you know, Dave, you and I talk about this kind of a lot, but not directly hitting that topic. Um, and so I just I, part of part of what we do on the show, of course, is to give actual real ST examples. So I wanted to give a couple examples, and then uh, Dave, I'll throw it to you and, and kind of get your take on it too. Um, so something that actually happened recently, I was sweeping and uh, cleaning the upstairs. And of course, with eight people in the house and a dog, the house is just constantly a mess. It's never not a mess. And uh, so anyway, I was cleaning up the kitchen, I was sweeping. And as I was sweeping, I was going, man, I just feel like everyone in this house, I have to cater to. Like I have to do all your stuff and I have to do all your stuff. And you guys are just living here rent free and I'm taking care of it all. And it's really frustrating and I'm, I'm sick of catering to all this. And as I had that thought, uh, it was like a red flag. It was like, whoa, time out, dude. And I had to reverse the question. I've been really trying, especially since I learned about consume last, you know, gosh, it's been four years now. Um, you know, flip that around. And so the question I had to ask myself was, what does everyone else feel like they have to cater to for me in this house? And I thought about that for a while and I, I came up with some ideas. And then, um, I was, but I was like, I need to talk to Wendy about this. And I need to get her perspective. And so uh, last weekend when we were in the car on the way to a birthday party, I asked Wendy that question. I said, what do you feel like you have to cater to, to me on? And she said, um, I quit catering to you a long time ago because I couldn't, I couldn't. And that, that doesn't mean she doesn't do nice things for me or she, you know, she doesn't put up with me or, and, or anything like that. But she's like, no, I have to. And I said, well, what about the kids? And she went on to explain some things about the kids and kind of where they're at. And I, I kind of use her to hack my consume a little bit, especially when it comes to the family. But, um, but yeah, that was, that was like, uh, whoa, okay. I like there's, she, she mentioned some things about how, like how I can be with my tone and different things with the kids and how they feel like at times they have to tiptoe around me on things where it's with her. They don't necessarily have to do that. And, uh, She's like, where's this all coming from? Like, why, why are you even asking me this? This is weird. And I told her, I was like, I just, I don't want to be missing things um, that'll that'll harm us in the long run. My, my relationship with you, my relationship with the kids, and just things like in the home in general. Like, I can I can catch all the, the sensor things in the home that need to be dealt with. But with the people, it's a little tougher. Um, and so the, that was... That was like the the main story I've been thinking on for the last couple of weeks and thinking, OK, so what's the cost of me changing and changing my framework to accommodate what I need to be accommodating with my family? Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, and it's pretty deep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking about it for, like I said, for about three weeks now, solid. Um. But I guess the thing I've, I've been thinking about is like, okay, trying to ha trying to do this consume thing on top of trying to being concerned about this FE demon that I have with the tribe coming in and, and being concerned that I actually may not be the person I am that I think I am with the tribe. And then uh, trying to see where I can improve. And, uh, but also understanding that I have to let go of some of my own TI to be able to do that. And that's the hard part because my TI says, no, you're all these things you do make sense. All these things that you do, um, you've built up and, and have worked for so long um, and tying my identity to that. And then having to say, no, I need to actually change this, pull it out and change. That's tough. Um, and I've got more examples of how, you know, that gets into different things, but I wanted to start there. Um, so what i guess dave my question to you is what types of things have you seen uh you know recently or in the last few years that you've had to like change your fi on and what did it cost you but in a positive way what yeah what is, so let, me, let me try and get my so sure. yeah i'm trying to get uh something that i get my head around because you're you're, yeah, yeah. you're talking very deeply very personally yeah. in your life story and it's it's going into a very kind of yeah, personal yeah. place and so now i'm trying to like get something that is more extroverted that i can kind of latch on to yeah. i don't, I don't want to have two conversations where i'm trying to like say an extroverted generality but then i'm actually dealing with the 
introverted story you know so give, sure. give me another run of like 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 ask me something kind of in an extroverted way like what uh to what, tell me more what you're trying to to get at here yeah, so what what let, let me yeah i'll pull back what types of things have you run into in the last maybe few months or year where you've had to really question your own fi value on something and consider changing it uh, and what does that cost you yeah gosh um my own fi value and what did it have to change and then the cost gosh it'd be, it'd be uh it'd be hard yeah, to think of that. Know, maybe i can give you some more while you're thinking about it yeah yeah one of the one of the costs to i'll go into my own religious experience one of the costs of leaving mormonism for me uh so wendy wendy left three years before i stepped out and one of the things, and I, I know this can be translated to a lot of people as they leave any organized religion, but one of the things I kept thinking of was, man, this is really tough because I, I'm seeing more and more how all these things that I've built for myself based on what I've been participating in for so long has been, um, pro is probably not right. It's not true. And um, that part didn't bother me as much as the FE fallout I was hoping to avoid. Um, because I knew by changing that part of my life, I might have to give up a whole lot of people that might, might want to give me up, which is hurtful. And that also might want to, um, try to change my mind. And once my mind's changed, the quickest way to really piss me off is try to show me how I'm wrong when my TI is so certain that it's correct. Um, and then, and then my parents dealing with that and and just all these things that I might have to leave behind because I'm making this change in my life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. To, uh, help me out. Uh, what what uh, what are you looking for? I'm trying to have a hard time trying to track you. OK, how about this? What do you recommend to TIs as they're trying to consume? Or, or or any di any consume last for that matter di the ti fi doesn't matter uh I, I don't know honestly i'm having a hard time trying to get some context around uh you know what uh what direction to go here hmm. are you asking so i missed a lot of it because i'm like over here typing and, and screwing off here but like I mean, is the fundamental question is like, how do I deal with the discomfort or how do I deal with making the right decisions based on potentially the try feedback that might not be so good or what? What's yeah. The... So it's this idea that by, by having to confront hard things um, and by wanting to progress and become somebody new, there's going to be some changes that we're going to have to go through and um it's going to cost us there's there's an there's an opportunity cost associated with it let me give you a different example maybe this opportunity cost is in like suffering or opportunity cost you're going to lose something like friends family correct you know? the okay. latter okay. right so yeah because like um uh let me give a different example i have people ask me fairly routinely how long will it take to get me to be as strong as you and be able to bench as much as you I say, honestly, Never. solid five to six years. Okay, that seems a little long, but what do I have to do? Well, you got to get your diet correct. You got to get your sleep correct. You got to train religiously. Uh, you got you got to do all these things. And if you don't do them day in, day out for a long time, you, you'll progress, but you're never going to progress to where you want to be. So the cost associated with getting you know strong is a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of days you don't want to go to the gym. It's just a lot of hardship, you know, um, and, and pushing through things that you don't necessarily want to push through. If you're willing to do that, yeah, you can get strong. Anyone can do that. Uh, but the, the opportunity cost is uh, not spending time with friends, maybe not getting quite as much sleep, maybe uh, leaving some things on, you know, on the table that you might otherwise diet, for example, going out and partying, having fun with friends, you're leaving all these things on the table. And, and it can be hard to let those things go. And then on top of that, I'm sorry, I'm going so like, there is layer on layer here. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying, trying to see what you're 
It seems like there's a lot here. Yeah, there and, is. And I don't want to just buzz bomb some random thing because it's just going to be deeper, 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 deeper. You, you, I it feels think like you're kind of asking for, you've given us like a very abstract scenario. We're not really, I don't feel like we really know this, or at least I don't know the scenario all the way, but then you're asking for details on what to do yeah. based on something. That yeah. sounds very, it sounds very, it sounds very personal. It doesn't sound like you're kind of asking like a, Kind of general I know, I, question. It's not sorry, like you're trying, trying to solve some personal. I know what the general question is. I'm trying to put it into words, so I apologize. Um, I thought I had it, but apparently I don't. Um, Just keep general... trying. We'll get it. We'll get it. We got time. <laughs> well, and buzz bomb and, and interject some play. That might help too. Um, I, I, I guess I'm just looking at. I think I think a, a crux of it too is not wanting to deal with that change, and then there's a lot of negative self talk associated with that. So how do we pull ourselves out? If if we have a progression mindset, how do we pull ourselves out of some of the negative talk we give ourselves around those changes, the negative talk we give ourselves around uh, maybe tribe fear? Um, how, how do we how do we blow through that? Like what what steps do we have to uh, take? To start so it's like it? an emotional processing question. Like how do I deal with yeah. all the 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 horrible or the horrible maybe is too much? How do I deal with all the pain that comes from change? Especially yeah. when it comes from with the tribe, how do you process that? Is that kind of what you're going for, or am I? I'm off? doing for kind that's of all your, I'm, I'm right? processing all of this, so okay. <laughs> that's why I'm like, if you guys want to start buzz bombing, go for it, because I, I, I don't think. Okay, you're... it sounds like you want to change. You're gonna to have to give up some stuff, and you're like, shit. How do I deal with yeah. that? Is there is there still a question of like, should I do it, or is that pretty much solved? And you're just wondering how you're gonna get through it. I I think well, that could be a question too, right? Like okay. one of the questions for me with uh, leaving church was like, do I really want to do this? The pain mm -hmm. of being in church and hearing the same like negative things over and over. It was like, I, I just wasn't feeling congruent. So for me, that was like obvious. I had to get out and, yeah. and leave. Right. So, uh, but, but that could be, that could be a question. I think the, the bigger question though, is just pulling back from more of just a growth mindset. Like I need to make some changes in my life. I know it's going to cost me. I feel comfortable, and I think this is part of it too. I feel comfortable uh, being where I'm at, even though I know I want to get over there. Sorry, but you're going to go. But you're going to go there, right? Or you're going to. I, I, wanna, I wanna and you just there. have to yeah. wonder how you're going to deal with the pain, yeah. right? If we can ni it down to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to help you, and I and I feel like I just keep throwing up variables. Um. Yeah, so I guess, where do you start? And that's why I asked the question, where do you start with like, how do I start even processing what I need to change? Recognizing uh, um, the costs associated with what, uh, the possible costs associated with that change. And then being able to actually find some foot or some grounding to move forward and being okay with leaving the person that I am behind. Does that make can sense? I, can I ask a question? I know you're asking Dave. Yes, but I'm please. Curious, like what what tells you that you need to change? Like, is there something specific that you says, oh, I need to be over here. Is there something wrong with, with this? Or are you just in general feeling like, you know what? I got to be progressing. I don't know where necessarily. Well, I, like, I think for me, for example, it'd be in like consume last. If I don't consume what the tribe, my like my family is telling me, my concern is I'm going to miss out on things over a long period of time. And then the tidal wave is going to come and just go, when I'm not expecting it. Okay, so it sounds like you want to be a person that consumes and. Well, I want to. So for, yeah, for me, like the the value is the family. So I'm recognizing that one of the things Shannon and I talked about was you know the consume last tend to because they're not paying attention. Okay. Um, they they tend to do all right, especially like a sleep last place. We tend to do all right for a long period of time, and then because we're not paying attention, something's going to come out in the woodwork and go. So like consume in the context of your family and you feel like you're not doing the consume. For me, it'd be, yeah. And you need to progress there, but you yeah. don't really know how to do it and you don't really know what that's going to cost. And mm -hmm. kind of well, and just, just emotionally processing that whole thing and being yeah. okay with like, you know, who I am and what I'm doing feels comfortable, but I know I so need to get out of that. It's just a guess where it's like, okay, I'm consumed last. I have a family that's important to me. So this must be screwing something up and then therefore I have to change or is it like, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, sorry, I have like dominated the conversation. Dave, you, may, you probably have something to say. Uh, no, I'm just still, still trying to track, uh, trying to get like a, a known category here. Like, are, are, what, what, what are we talking about? Like, so what is what? Okay, what is cons uh, consume last <clears throat> in regards to your family? What do you see consume last as? Like, be, yeah, maybe that's a good place to start. What do I see consume last as? In in the context of your family, where you say, "Oh, I need to improve this," what what kind of voids are you? Do you feel like you're leaving there, or maybe you don't I feel know? Like I'm leave, I feel like I'm leaving voids of. Uh, and sorry, I'm I'm trying not to turn this into a therapy session because I'm actually feeling really good about all this. But um, I'm I'm trying to avoid the void of not knowing where my kids stand with me oh, and okay. understanding okay. their emotional okay. needs. I'm aware of their physical needs more or less. It's their emotional needs that I'm concerned with. And oh, okay. while Wendy does a really good job of trying to meet those, um, I'm trying to make sure I'm even in tune because sometimes I don't find out about things until even months and months after the fact when Wendy tells me about it. I'm like, they were going through what? I had no idea. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, Dave, you got it. Uh, almost, almost. So, so tell me more. What? Yeah, tell me. Help me understand what it is exactly that you're you're wrestling with. What are you, what are you worried about? Like, what what kind of life change? What are you? The, is it is it oh, that? I want I, I want to make the change. And right? what what exactly what exactly are we talking about? So for me. In my case, I want to make the change, uh, change of being able to more effectively be in tune with what my family needs, right? Emotionally. Emotionally. Yeah. Especially because, like I said, physically, I've more or less got that covered. Right. But there's a pain. A, there, I felt a pain associated with the fact that internally I have to make some changes myself. And there's this guy I feel like I'm leaving behind that's me because I'm becoming somebody new. When I left Mormonism, I was becoming somebody new. And I feel like, am I leaving this guy behind? And is that okay? And is it okay to leave that old person that I was behind and move on to something else and, and forget about that? Does that make sense? Probably not. Uh, no, sure, sure. What, but so what, what, help me see what the problem, what, what is the problem that's trying to get solved? Like what is- Accepting that. Or is it, well, it just seems like just being blind to the emotional needs that of his too. kids and maybe it's their view the of him thing. and what they need from him. And then he's kind of attributing that to being consumed less. And yeah, that's my read on. Yeah. That. Maybe give a, uh, help me see what the, the problem looks like in the, in the day to day. It's, it's just the emotional voids when you and the kids or their. Or, yeah. Like, so that that's the problem I want to solve part of it. So it's, there's two problems actually doing, fixing that problem and becoming somebody new, but not constantly going back and reverting back to the person I was because this new, just like when you're, when you're lifting weights and you get sore and you're like, this sucks, this is new. And I hate it. That's the most common thing I get. I, and I felt it too. I finally had to learn to become confident and um, okay with being sore and in a lot of pain to be able to lift heavier and heavier weights. And when I reframed that, it was like, oh, being sore, this is great, I'm making progress. Versus, oh, this is sore, I hate this, I'm never going back, I'm more comfortable over here. How do we how do we bridge that gap between who we were and who we're becoming? Because at times, that I feel like for me, and I've seen it in others, that's where we get stuck. This new growth process, when we're doing something new, when we're growing, when we're changing, it's hard, uh, whether it be from fear or because we're in positions where we don't even know what we're doing. Um, how do we overcome that? And so are you attached to who you used to be in this case or who you are now? And if there are changes that need to be made in order to be more in tune with what your kids need, is that like a, and you're worried? I mean, sure. Yeah, that could, be, that could be part of it. I feel like I'm making progress. Like I'm I, right now, personally, like I'm happy to make that change. But there's been that that case before where it's like, why would I change? Like, things are fine. Why would I change? This is where I'm comfortable. Why would I leave church? This is where I'm comfortable. Why would I Why would I go to the gym? It sucks over there. 
Well, clearly it's not fine if you're even asking this question, right? Clearly you've had some clues where you're like, you know well, what? Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> just, just, I, I'm, it's not it's not perfect. I'm 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 processing all of this, okay. and I'm just now with you guys now just processing it out loud, mm -hmm. um, because I've been thinking about it a lot. But it's just how do we become okay with change? Mm -hmm. How do we become comfortable with change? And especially Dave, I'm I'm curious as you're you know you're listening from your you know from your observers and your deciders coming back and seeing what you've seen with tifes in the, you know in the past and and kind of what you think about that too just that from that different point of view yeah it's kind of like an oi thing because when i when you say change in my all oh, yeah change great yeah, yeah. let's do it <laughs> but you're like you know what i don't <laughs> well imagine changing all your ti though too not just yeah great if it's yeah. better ti sure why not like, let's you know, what I'm trying to yeah, it's still hard to hard to change an introverted function. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. For me, I'd, I'd be trying to like, I guess, from an observer angle, I'll be trying to see and see what the problem is in reality. If I can see the sensor problem and then go, okay, so for, first I need to get enough sensory. So what what the hell are we talking about? What what exactly is it? Get mm -hmm. enough sensory and then go, oh, that's the category of X Y Z. I've seen this category before. A, you know, as somebody in our 40s, it's like, okay, we've seen this before, we've seen other people go through this before, or we've gone through this before in some other stage. And then from there, I'm trying to then figure out, okay, so people that have been in this same category, have the same set of problems with the same kind of troubles that I'm having in the same category, the people that are now like way over here, how did they get from here to there? Well, then I'm looking up there going, all right, so here's the Tony Robbinses or whoever, whoever has gotten out of this pit. And then I'm just trying to back reverse engineer and observe, okay, what steps did they do? What things did they do? And kind of working uh, backwards from that way. Because for me, with like with like feminine demon TE, it's like like the thinking is like always way at the end and it's always like last and it's feminine and it's like, who cares? I think a lot of times the TIs are like, they'll like have a problem. They've got to like think through all the decisions and all the logic. And here's the problem and here's the solution. Now, how do I get from there to there? You know, and not that it doesn't work, because obviously the TIs get a lot of very incredible things done. But just that's how I usually am trying to like get my head around something is the, mm -hmm. the if I can get the missing information filled in, then it's like, oh, well, that looks like that. And then this goes from here to here. And then 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 comes the easy part of going, all right, so now I have to work a way at becoming the type of person that can get out of this category and work them their, their way up to that category. And then, and at that point, that where that's where it'll be more triggering for you guys because having to break the muscles of TI, FE, TI, FE, you know, and moving the deciders, you know, moving up those steps, that's going to be just a harder, more triggering process. But the way I kind of look at it is like in, in, a, in an equation of growth, you know, you're stuck here and you, you see that I need to get out of this and I have to go up here. That it's just like a, it just reminds me of that old sorry game where like you're going around the squares and like, some of the squares you're like fighting for every inch, you get knocked back. And then, but if you're green and you hit the green square, then you like slide ahead. So it's like there's an equation where there's all these steps and you're going to get a couple of them where you're going to be like, yay, this is easy. And it might be if if you're a double observer, it's going to be over here where you're figuring out the equations. And if, and if you're, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. just knowing that some steps along the way are, are going to be absolutely murder in that process, but still trying to work backwards from if I can, if I can see that I'm in a common spot where other people have been, and I can see where the new camp is over here, then it's just how do I get myself from there to there, you know? So there's my my general, my my general uh, kind of map of when I'm when I'm coming up against things that I see I've got to change or update on, you know? And yeah, for me the hardest thing is getting the missing information, and then from there it's like, all right, let's create the chip away process to to become the new identity, you know? Does does that ever conflict at all with your own fi like your own values if there's something new that you need to you see that you need to change it like i've seen this with wendy for example where she started this business and everyone was telling her like do this thing do it this with this pro here's your sit or you know te process now go do it and she was doing it and she was making money hand over fist but she just felt so bad about it she had to stop and she could she it's like it's even years later it still left a bad taste in her mouth where she it, it's it's almost like a physical reaction do you ever have anything like that going oh yeah anything? yeah 
Yeah, and and I feel like yeah, and I feel like with the with the deciders in the middle, it, it, it still is, it's definitely hard and frustrating because everybody is di at the end. Everybody wants their way, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just not as triggering, I think, you know, for for having like a decider at the top. Um, but just kind of the groove that I've kind of found myself in is I'm 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 actually what's motivating me as, as much as possible is I'm actually trying to find the least amount of pain per lifetime. So I really sat down to the equations of like understanding all this psychology and evolutionary psychology and the coins and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Just seeing that humans are very pain motivated and, and sure there's pleasure and goals and rewards and all that. Very but like, right. even those are almost like they're just they're like farther away from pain, you know, so mm -hmm. pain is pain is pretty it's a pretty extreme motivator and yeah. so it's a little like um uh disheartening or non-cool to be like really so i'm really just largely motivated by pain is that it, it might it, am i might know better than that you know and so kind of like settling that as a human of like how pain motivated we are and then just trying to become one with that so it's like all right well how can i have the least amount of pain per lifetime and so then i'm, I'm looking at the equations the best i can and acknowledging the short-term pain of uh, i've just gotten very good at like acknowledging the difference between short-term pain and long-term pain acknowledging that like um in in certain areas of my life i'm definitely very committed to the least amount of pain for the lifetime and of course you know coincidentally it's going to be more in the t and the f so it's like i'll be able to adjust relationships or i want this or i don't want this or their way or my way or emotional connection like that stuff i'm going to move really really fast because i don't want pain in that area so for the long term so i'll go through a lot of short-term pain and so in that regard when i'm telling the universe i want the least amount of pain in my t and my f like then my life results actually are kind of showing that you know and, and will as i get older now what gets interesting is everybody's liar brain will then say like as an observer will be like oh and i don't want the most amount of pain when it comes to the computer which is a lie which is that's just some that's just some program, you know, when you're filling out your video typing questions and you're just lying about, you're not seeing your whole self, mm -hmm. but I, I see enough of myself to know that the full Dave Powers actually wants the most amount of pain in observer land. I know that sounds funny, but it's just, it's brutally honest of that. I, I have not conquered the programs that when the, you know, update your computer button comes up, I just shove it away. Cause I'm like, I want the least amount of pain in the moment. So I'm not going to update my computer now. And so I want the least amount of pain. So I keep talking. And now another part of me knows, okay, but you're going to get the most amount of pain in a lifetime for with computers and observer stuff if you keep doing that. And so I'm like, shut up. I don't want to know that right now. You know? So they still have these little, these little trapped areas. So yeah, it, uh, it, it and, and everybody is that way, you know? And for the deciders, it's going to be, you guys would be like, look, if I got to move, houses or move if i got to change from mac to pc or android to apple like i don't know whatever if that's what my spouse wants i'm not going to die over the the things but it's going to be a lot harder when it comes to you know like with ti it's very much like ni it's like when it comes to hey time to update your computer the ti is like no no mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do anything but that and then it just causes <laughs> that the universe is like oh i guess we don't have a flow here and then here comes the buildup, you know so it's it's working backwards from the the goals of like what is the destination who do you want to be where do you want to be at and 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 as low as i could get the equations down i was like well i want to be the type of person that has the least amount of non-useful pain per lifetime and then you start stacking from there of like a person of honor and dignity and respect and like you add growing and giving you can add all right. those on there you know but at the core of trying to get away from the title is a pain you know so you said something interesting there. You, you said part of it, part of you wants to have the most amount of pain in observer land. So yeah, are you seeing that as? Yeah. <laughs> and Shan would agree. <laughs> <laughs> Is that she's like, yeah, go ahead. She's like, she's like, I'm more afraid of taxes than you are. That's why I'll do them and you run from them. I'm like, uh, I'm like, yep, yeah, it's true. It, it's, it's when I look at myself from the outside, it looks like exactly what Shan's been saying all these years. It, it looks like I want maximum observer chaos and hell because I will just run away from anything, you know, computers or taxes or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, I've gotten to the point where I can see that. And then I'm also like, well, uh, according to the happiness curve, that doesn't just wear off right away. That's, that's something that that will and can wear off as I get older, but I'm trapped in a in a young, handsome, forty six year old body where it, it takes a lot of years for that. For it's the it's the Pee Wee Herman snakes, you know, with the the pet store thing, where it's like mm -hmm. I, I've been able to 
you know, when you finally start turning your life around, it's like the, the easiest things are clean out the hamsters, like clean out the easy stuff, clean out the stuff that like, like for me, I'm like, oh, uh, let me start turning my life around. Let me clean out T and F there. That was fun. And then you're just, you're saving and stacking the the dragon for last, you know, the, the, the things that's super hardest for you, you know? So what, what things do you see TIs, you know, cause me and Dave are both TIs. What, see, what things do you see us dragging out in unnecessarily? Yeah, it seems to be the deciders, all the deciders, they, well, like looking at like function flow, right? Like there's a very, this is something we looked at in the early years. If you, if you kind of follow the, the idea of like the functions kind of flow one to the next, and you got the double ones in the middle when you're in your cruising. Mm -hmm. And so in some regards, you, you can make a case for any one of the temperaments is the best way to do it. Like the EPs is kind of great. They're like, <laughs> let's, let's gather first and then let's decide what we want. And then let's check the tribe, you know, and then, and then we'll organize later. Well, that makes sense to have gather above organize and then here comes the ijs that flipped it you know um it makes sense to be an ej because you're going to check everybody else first and then you're going to double observe and they're going to decide what you want or it makes sense to be an ip first you know so there's like these pros and cons of the function flow and when i when i see the you know the ijs are easy because it's just like and i use the ijs and the ips a lot because of their common math with the introverted function at the top and the extrovert function at the bottom so if i'm looking at ti's i'll look at ijs first and be like I'll get a warm run, a running start of like, okay, the IJs are going into a, a new stressful situation and they're like plan. And then everyone's like, Dick, like, could you, could you gather for, you know, as well or first preferably. Mm -hmm. And so what I see with all of the deciders is they're like my way. And, and I'm like, you, it, you're going to get your elbows broken. You guys look like you're doing this to freight trains. I'm like, wow, you guys, <laughs> want, you guys want fucking <laughs> maximum. <laughs> you guys want so much pain. Like I wouldn't do that. Uh, like it scares the hell out of me. Well, I got a lot of deciders around me. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so scared for you. Cause it's just, I want this my way. And it's like, you haven't listened to anybody else. You haven't, you're not considering what they're feeling. Like that is going to come back and, and pay so hard. So it's a, I try and as soon as I scare myself in one, I quickly try and get caught up with the other, you know, and, and I'm trying to look at the same. So the, you should be equally afraid for the IPs as you are the IJs. You know what I'm saying? You should see that they are going into a situation going my way. And then everyone's going, Ugh, you know, and that, that kind of fear. So I'm about to, well, it's sort of channel change. It's related, but Nate, do you feel like you have, uh, is there more? Or do you feel like you, you got some, no, I, kind like, of what you're dealing with or having yeah, more like, questions about that? Again, personally, I, I feel like I've got a good handle on this. And even though I'm still in the middle of it, I'm moving on. I just, I thought it was a very, I, 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 personal growth is the thing that got me into personality years and years ago, even before OP, right? And uh, I just thought it might be an interesting thing to tackle to say, you know, not only do we have to recognize that we have deficiencies, not only do we rec have to recognize where those deficiencies are, um, figuring out that person that we are leaving behind. For some people, that's not an issue. They're like, oh, but I'm not that person anymore. For others, and for me, like in some cases, that's still hard. Like I, I look at it and go, whoa, um, do I really want to make this change? Is, is the long, like the, the I know, again, it's fear-based and it's, it's people pain. But is the people pain for me of staying in something I just can't agree with greater than the people pain is going to be if I leave? Does it make sense? And just is that the core fear is the the pain from the tribe if you change, or is it something else? For me, it'd be from the tribe. Like even the if you feel like you're moving into a more positive direction, you feel right? Like, okay, right. Yeah, that that part's easy. It's it's for me. It's always the tribe. Yeah. And just and figuring out how to deal with that and making that decision like no like that's why i was curious um you know dave when like for example when you were making when you guys were starting op like the the different things that you were um experiencing and having to change and having to learn on for you i imagine it's probably just a lot of uh like you said just gathering in more information figuring out what you need to do with that and then running for me it's it's gathering more information but it's always specifically from the tribe not from I, I get it i've got tons of information i don't know what to do with that doesn't seem to matter if i don't know if i'm not checking in with them yeah 
Yeah. Well, you can always go back to, I think that's one thing to consider. If you go and you start changing, you're like, you know what, actually this is not worth it. And you can always go back. You never stuck yeah. in stone, you know, you always yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, very true. Yeah, it's a double siding. You can go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have to be one. I'm gonna never do my taxes again. I've decided. That's the plan. I'm never doing taxes <laughs> I wish again. I, could decide that. Yeah. I just paid mine and man, that was not fun. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Dave. You had another you said you were gonna channel change a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So like Dave, I saw a video that you did. It was a solo video, I'm pretty sure. I wish I could remember the exact video or give you sensory on that. I want to say it was roughly six or seven months ago or something, but you were talking about uh AI and you were talking about a lot of like big um like observer related issues that well everyone quite frankly is scared of and the takes that you gave on ai and all this stuff for me felt so settled and you felt so chill about all these things that are literally scaring the hell out of everyone yeah and the opinions you gave were like oh these are like also my opinions <laughs> <laughs> Which, as a TI person, like, oh, this other person thinks the same way. Oh, that's great. Therefore they're, right, therefore, they're awesome. Which we may be wrong, right? But I was like, right. this is literally the exact way I would like view this sort of thing with all of these global warming, all this crazy shit. Like, oh, it's gonna be fine. We, we, we know whatever. Who knows if that's right? Yeah. But, like you were so settled on that, and I thought that was so crazy because, like, I mean, from I mean, from years ago where you started, where you you know you had a lot of conspiracy stuff that were on your mind and that sort of thing, and to go from there. To where you're at now, which with a lot of issues that even like scare a lot of like double most normal double, people. Yeah, I haven't right. heard anyone else give that take, really, other than you. And like, yeah. I thought that was super cool. So my question is like, how the hell did you go from that all the way to being settled with stuff that literally scares the fuck out of everyone? And I'm yeah, wanting right. to apply what you did to me when it comes to decider stuff. Yeah, and I know right. that's hard because there's probably a million different things that you did, but like. Well, do you feel like there was a fundamental thing or there, there was a... Yeah, 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 very much. So. I, it's a lot of just trying to practice the stuff I'm always blasting about. And that is, uh, yes, at first, just seeing and acknowledging the triggering fears, just seeing and acknowledging that I have a triggering fear to anything in the news and observational stuff and the end of the world and aliens and AI, which are nat now actually literally here, which, uh, which is personally deep down, I, I love that in the sense of like, Oh my gosh, my worst fears are actually true. The aliens are on the news all the time, and AI is going to take over and all that stuff. And and the U.S. is is, is crumbling down, and China's raising up. It's like, oh, this this couldn't be more insane. But when I was a kid, I would have never believed that this much stuff was going on, you know. So it's it's been a good uh, uh, a workout to see that this this system works, that this practice works, and of like having the first step of like the first step acknowledging and separating. All right, I'm going to be triggered by observational events and conspiracies and aliens and AI and all that kind of stuff. And to be able to, Susan David style, separate the triggering feeling from the actual problem. And so I allow myself to have those triggering feelings. I don't try and solve those or worry about those when I have them. There was one that hit me the other night. I, it was like, I was going to bed. It was like on TikTok. And like, that's when the Russians put uh, 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 some nukes in space or they're going to put nukes in space or whatever. But there was like 24 hours where like a Congress guy like leaked this out, but they didn't say what the sensor problem was. And so I totally had my guard down. Like I wasn't, I was just like, you know, someone going to bed, like checking TikTok one more time. And I'm like, yeah, there's a, there's a threat coming from space. And I'm like half asleep. And so I started to get like these extreme observer fears, like, oh, it's the aliens. Oh God, they're finally, they've had enough. They're going to attack. Right. Like just like could feel the feelings. I haven't felt them in a long time. And uh, then the next day as I'm following up on, it, it's like, oh, it's just the Russians. They're just, they're just going to blow up some satellites, you know, but they're not really going to do it. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's just the Russians. Don't worry about that. But like I was able to, feel that extreme like good old-fashioned observer fear and so i don't worry about that anymore it's just like oh yeah that's what i get scared by you know and then from there after the emotions run their course i'm like all right so i, I need to get to work like what what does gary v have to say about it and I, don't, I don't mean that necessarily literally i don't i don't watch him as much as i used to but it's like what what does the istp say i'll use those guys a lot what do the double observers say and i'll and i'll look i'll check 10 of them that i respect you know and uh, I also try and um, put my my wiggly, nervous energy into something. And so things like, you know, building a business or having more friends, you know, just winning in normal life, like that does, you know, yeah, sure, have a, a second bank account or have a passport so you can go to Canada. You know, in fact, you should be doing meetups in Canada anyways. Like get 90% on offense where I, I can move and direct my life that, you know, if the alien Russians attack, 
that uh, I'm like, well, I'm glad I haven't been hiding in a hole because now I have friends and now I have contacts and now I have business and I have all this. So kind of a way to kind of to circle it back around. But then the last point, too, is um, no longer choosing to I guess the last point is like choosing to place a place my bet in a gamble like. You know, like if you're if you're choosing a religion, you're like, okay, I'm going all in that this is the right one, and everyone else is going to hell. You know, it's like you're it's a pretty intense gamble you're you're putting a decision into. And so I've made this decision that the world is not going to end. Now, I could be wrong. There's a very small statistical chance that this really could be the end, but it's like I've really seen just over the years that it's pro like it, people say that all the time, and it, and then they also say, you know, they say it all the time and then eventually it's going to come true. It's like, and I get it. And I know there's like ancient civilizations that they're digging up, but so that civilization has ended several times, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But I'm just you can choosing... only make that gamble if you're not scared, right? Yeah, Even though yeah. like everyone would probably agree if they were balanced, like, oh yeah, it'll most likely be fine. I don't know. But you can right. only do that if you're not terrified, right? Like that's kind right. of core of what it feels like. Right, right. So I am, I'm trying, when I'm in my rational mind, I'm trying to anchor down that chances are uh, the, the world is not going to blow up or end in in my lifetime now it, what is uh something that i i think the, the more core fears when i dig down and look at it, it's like okay so then what are you really afraid of i'm like oh i'm afraid of um you know the u.s economy not being the best like oh there you go that's a practical double observer conversation that's kind of real you can look at that yeah the the u.s economy is probably not going to be you know better over the decades it's probably going to be getting worse so are you afraid to move like <gasps> that i'm afraid to yeah. move i'm afraid of filling mm -hmm. out the passports i'm afraid of learning a new language it's like you're so afraid of the chinese why don't you fucking pull a john Zena istp and learn chinese and then just yeah. go fucking join them like i could and i'd be the tallest yeah. coolest guy around like that would be fucking awesome like why, why don't i do that you know like all of a sudden you like, get yeah which you will and i think people ignore that the fact that like oh what if this situation happens you want to stay alive don't you you'll do what you have to do you know right. you may not think in this point that you would do it because you're right. at a different point but if you're right, like it, you know like if you're homeless you're going to go beg people for food even though you can never right. see yourself doing that you will do that yeah you right 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 totally so it just it gets me all the way to my demon oe that hasn't been turning on which is why i'm all mm -hmm. backlogged with fear because then i start to realize i'm like oh i could i can move to china i could move to uh, sweden i can move to europe and oh this, i have a, a lot of friends in europe and, and this would be new and then and then coming back to the fear of like um i still don't like change i'm like i know you don't like change you idiot like like i've got a lot of change coming here with like these profiles getting written and stuff like that like i've had a lot of nervousness the past few months and, and we'll have a lot of nervousness the next few months because we've got a lot of good change coming there's going to be quite a quite an uptick coming for us like going like b to b and stuff like that and so uh, I, I've always seen this, you know, as an INTJ, I've always seen like two years ahead because part of it is like I'm DI. So I'm like, I'm seeing the path. I'm seeing which way the energy wants to flow and then I'm choosing it. So I'm like double, double stacking it. And so, you know, every couple of years when stuff happens in our life, it's like, I'm like, yeah, I know. Like I saw that coming and I've been trying to make it come. So it's like the thing that uh, I've always had this when we first launched ops in 2018, I was super nervous the year before, even though it was great. It was good. It was better than we expected. When I launched the RC videos that would do get millions of views, I was always nervous months before because I knew they would get millions of views. So it's kind of this weird, like, even if it's positive, I still have these triggering feelings of like, Oh no! Well, my cozy routine, and I won't have so much time to myself, and uh, you know, and I'll, I'll have to be around people more, and 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 then like I'll have to move, and I'll I'll have to like I'll have money to buy a new car, and I'll have to it'll be a car that I want to get, so I have to share it with Shan. I'm like, oh no, I have to get a new car. Like then this is what's, and then it just comes back like, hey dumbass, those feelings also aren't something to you know to, to build your 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 life around. That's just you're you're you idiot. You're triggered by scary things like aliens and then you're also triggered by you have enough money to get yourself a, a, your own new car or whatever some positive thing <laughs> so to being able to separate that out and so i can get to work on it but so, yeah the, yeah uh, go ahead do you have do you have more <laughs> no that's that? that's it i was gonna talk in circles what is that kind of crazy no, so okay. what, what i kind of extracted from that was like okay <laughs> you have the problems the things you're worried about and really the problem is not the problem because these problems are not really things you can control so much anyway yeah. Rather, the, the, the problem is your fear of the problem right? and having an awareness of that fear and where it comes from and then focusing on that rather than focusing on how you're going to fix the problem that you can't fix anyway. 
Yeah. That's kind of been more the solution or my like. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Cause it's like, yeah, the, there are fucking legitimate problems. So mm -hmm. you, you might not want to be the guy last of the party. Like, yeah, if you're an IJ and the world is going through a lot of change, some good, some bad, you might not want to be resisting change because change is coming. And so, and, and also too, like kind of playing the identity game, I kind of got tired of watching the double observers like uh, get all the wins on the other side of a tidal wave. Like, like, like Y2K was a big one for me, even though it was a long time ago. I remember my dad, he's a double observer, ISTP. And uh, he just, you know, quietly made fun of me the whole fucking time. And rightfully so, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, because I was young, I was like a teenager, you know? And, and uh, uh, just just getting egg on your face every time, you know, 2012, the world's going to end. 2008, the world's going to end. 2020, the world's like, you know, and it's always being the one to where I, I've watched myself and, and my tribe, the observers, I've watched us, you know, squirrel away and buy gold and, and take 10 years out of being competitive to hide in a hole and prepare and get canned soup and all this kind of shit. And then after the wave, then you got all these fucking double observers that are just, you know, making tons of money and moving in life and being successful and being happy. And I'm like, God damn, I'm tired of being the sucker on the other side of change. If the world is going to get taken over by Chinese alien robots or whatever the fuck the fear is, then I am going to, if John Zena can find a fucking niche and get on the top of that wave, I'm going to beat that asshole. I'm going to, I'm going to finally be ahead uh, and get some positive from the change. And then now you're Tony Robbins. Now you're like, okay, here comes change. I'm going to look for the opportunity. And now let's just back to, you know, the IJ discovering OE or, or discovering double observing, you know? Yeah. That sounds key where the, the point you made about like remembering the other times where you were scared and then yeah. you know, nothing happened. And then, you know, next time something happens, remember all those events where you were yeah. freaking out and it was fun. It'd be like, you know what? Usually it works out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like that's like, I feel like that's really good because I think a lot of, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm in IP, so I don't know what people do, but like, I feel like <laughs> when it, when it, you have to remember your wins, you have to remember those times in your life where you felt something was completely impossible. Yeah. And then you solved and you got through it. And you should stack those up to where any any time you do that again, where you're like, "Fuck, there's no way, like this is impossible." Be like, you know, you said that before, right? You are right. Maybe you can do it again. No, you right. will do it again. You got yeah, right, 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 so, totally. Yeah, I, I, I uh, uh, for me personally, I like to stack the the ones where I lost, and I'll use that as like negative motivation, yeah. and then that'll force mm -hmm. me to remember. I'm like, hey, that's true. I did yeah. win this before. I have done this before. Okay, damn it. But yeah. I was it um who's the guy that is uh, talking about he's, he's an INTJ guy I don't remember his name in a minute but he's been going on the internet more and more we did a class on him double mask oh. it talks a lot about um uh uh I'll remember a minute but um he he uh no I forgot the hell what he was talking about but uh I, I forget I forget I'll remember in a minute we'll, we'll just move on let me well let me ask you I meant to ask you this before we started but like time wise how are you do you have a set amount of time i just want to keep that in mind oh uh, yeah i go for another hour yeah okay okay cool i just want to make Joe sure we'll probably have some questions at the end and just that's great like a little gap if so, that's okay for that yeah i want to interject right now too just real quick yeah. rose brings up something in the comments that i was thinking too while you were answering dude and that's you were just you just answered my question like everything yeah, buddy. <laughs> awesome. I knew you would if you just started going. Started talking long enough. Yeah. I had, I had faith in the sleep blast. It was there. <laughs> great, great. Which which uh, random part was it? So it, it, it there was a whole lot of them, but one of the parts that you were talking about was like um just rec a couple of things. One recognizing that um you know, there, like when you were talking about the world and I was like the world hasn't really ended yet. Like could maybe but it's still going on, even though we've been crying about it for centuries, right? Oh, every every yeah, every generation thinks it's the end of the world. Every yeah, literally yeah. every generation will point something out. It's like, oh, this is the end. Oh, we got TVs now. Oh, that's gonna that, dude. Everyone's Fucking gonna be that, stupid, man. Man. Oh, we that. got books now. Everyone's just gonna be reading all the time, you know. I, I'm that guy. That's who I default him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got your damn now it's a cell phone, right? You're yeah. you, know, you got a dopamine fast and all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, go on, Nathan. What, yeah, and then uh, and then um, the the other part that I was like thinking about too was was just the whole idea of of um, grabbing onto those things that haven't either been so bad in the past or like where you've seen your wins, and then you said wrapping your identity around that. And one of the things I've been thinking about is just even though I have this tribe fear in my own head, um, somebody said something to me once as I was 
about ready to leave the church, I said, I felt like I was hanging on to the edge of a cliff, you know, with both hands and it's, it's foggy below and I can't see where I'm going or where I'm going to fall to. And she says, I know exactly how you feel. She said, but when I decided to let go, I found that the, the ground was just like a couple inches below my feet. And even though it was a hard landing, it wasn't really that bad. And I found that most of my tribe issues really haven't been that bad. Just like I'm guessing most of your observer issues, probably yeah, right. just like, yeah, I mean, they suck, right? It's not like they're all uh, all dandy and stuff, but but it's just like, eh, I got through it and it's fine. And so I can wrap myself around that going forward rather than all the worries I had before. Yeah, yeah. It's like Dave was saying a minute ago, uh, you can always go back and redo it. It's definitely a, I, I'm constantly trying to understand the mechanism of double observing, double deciding, single observer, single deciding. Like that's that's what I'm always obsessed about is that it just feels like a little ball of nerves, like a mathematical virus chemical reaction thing. And like in, in fixed and growth mindset, I think describes it really well. So like we're, we're naturally very fixed mindset in our first and fourth function. So it's always this all or nothing type thinking. It's always like, okay, I have this giant big decision and then I have to get it right. And then I'm going to, maybe I'm going to do it. Maybe I'm not going to do it. And then if I get it wrong, then everything falls apart and I lose and I'm jumping off the cliff. And I'm like, Hey, like that, that's not what you're doing with your finances. You're just like, oh, I, I got that wrong. Let me go down to the bank and straighten that out. It's it's it's, it's never over. It's yeah. never, it's never, never over. And and that's how I feel about people. It's like, oh yeah, they could be upset or whatever. I'll just go back and say sorry. And then the, the, like this is it's never, it's never game over. The game is always going on. But like I I feel those feelings of extreme stuckness with you know electronics or computers or or whatever. And and I and it doesn't even mean that in all areas I'm able to just knock them all out, you know, because those those feelings are still so extreme that it, it'll shut you down. And then life is so distracting. You're like, you know what? I, I can't deal with this right now. I'll just go deal with this over here. So so, yeah, I, I do try and look for the, the that that mechanism of, uh, OK, it, it, that's what I'm like looking up here, like how's Tony Robbins doing or whatever. It's like, all right, how if I were to get to my get to a place to where I have unity with the tribe and all that kind of stuff i have mm -hmm. to be able to allow myself to have tons of back and forth because if you frame out that 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 view of like all right if i take my computer down to the shop and it doesn't work i can uh blow it up a die no hold on okay what well, there's this there's another thing what was it oh i could go to another computer guy like oh, i can go to another computer guy and then like you you see yeah. that oh i have the, the the conversation and the relationship and it didn't work i can have it again two days later and i can keep working on it i can yeah. get people involved and that's what uh, it, it, for me, I like I like to corner myself to where I can at least like very reluctantly be like, OK, yeah, I could I could contact 10 computer guys. And there's like kind of a def you kind of defeat that stuck virus. And then it puts it puts it on to, well, shit, now I don't have anything to hide behind. Now I now I can't play dumb. Now I now I know the path. I just have to go do it. And now and then I like to get down to where I'll just tell Shan this. I'm like. Look, I know, I do know how to fix my computer, but I'm going to just honestly tell you, I don't want to do it. I just want to be a bitch. I want to cry one more day. And there's like some honesty to that. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I can't, I can't say, well, it won't work. Well, I'll be stuck. It's like, nah, you, you know, better than that. You know, you can, you can keep working it out. No, I, I, I get that because like, there's part of me, especially like at work with people that I don't want to deal with or object. It's, it's usually not the issue that bothers me. It's the person I got to go deal with. Yeah, so I'm gonna bitch and moan about it and and gossip about it one more day before I go talk. To right, you. right, and that's fine. Just just call it. That's what I like to try and do. Just like mm -hmm. I'm gonna take another day to bitch and complain and not actually do something about this. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And so it's what I do. And it's like it's, honestly, you're you're respecting. You know, it's just like having a, a lagging muscle body part. You're like, yeah, I know my calves are behind. I'll fucking get on it. But I'm gonna go do, do bench today because I feel bad about it or whatever. It's like the the honesty of looking at the people that we admire they're like 55 and older so it's like it's it's not realistic to be young and and to to, to be able to see these imbalances in ourselves that you're not even supposed to see until your late 40s or 50s and then get to work on them if you're looking at the tribe you're looking at the statistics of the happiness curve so that is that has helped me out a lot and it's helped out a lot of other people too that I, I keep sharing it with of uh, being able to grade yourself on a curve um according to your age i think this is really really important of like not only your age physically you know early 40s or whatever but also your age of like okay how long have you been not an alcoholic like when did you start turning your life around uh, and started taking self-growth very seriously because that 
there, there's a big difference in whether that's been two years, five years, eight years, 10 years, because it's like a martial art it really starts to compound, you know? Oh, yeah. So because it's like just, just a quick example, like we can see it in the um, it's easy for us to see it in like the sleep last where go ahead and tell a 25 year old who sleep last like, hey, you should meditate. And you're like, shut up. Like none of that's going to work. Like you, you have the right answers, but you're going to just look like a fool telling a kid the right answers because now the kid is learning. Well, I don't need to listen to you because I'm not going to do that. And mm -hmm. they just build like an immunity to it. And you just you, you have to let yourself get sick of it and get old enough and get burnt out and then you'll do it you know i got some action in the yeah. comments here. Good, good 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 comment there <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, like it just triggered me to pour my whiskey <laughs> <laughs> oh nice oh, one gosh yeah so w what you're saying is i need bigger delts and uh i've been saying that since the beginning yeah like you need to it, it match your maybe arms hit up Dave because i feel like there's an imbalance there so yeah these look like oh lagavulin wolfhound i do have some lagavulin actually some 16. oh shit good. somebody's got wolfhound you got some lagavulin going okay or are you just commenting on this thinking it's lagavulin because it's not it's actually johnny walker, johnny walker green yeah good though still good johnny walker green Yep. So, Dave, I got a. I like Lagavulin 16. That's probably one of my more favorite. We still have to do that one. We haven't done that one yet. Maybe yeah. next time we do that. Or is that the one that's like 300 bucks or something? Or is it like, is it affordable? Well, or is it... I think it's affordable here, but I don't know about Jeremy. I have to check. Well, it's been cheaper here, right? Isn't it? Generally, it's been cheaper there. Lagavulin is Scott, Scottish, right? Scottish, yeah. It's Might a real smoky one, but it is. I'm down. Yeah, yeah we'll do. Yeah, fuck, you know, if I, <clears throat> I don't spend money on anything anyway. So, <laughs> fine. This most money goes to yeah drugs and alcohol and delivery service so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> should be fine i'll fit into my budget so i do have a i have another question ch completely channel changing a couple months ago when we were sending audios back and forth you were mentioning that you were just starting to get a better grasp on se so i'm curious what is your se understanding been in the last you know eight nine ten weeks i, I think it was any i think i was talking about any oh any. maybe it wasn't e. yeah. was e, but go ahead yeah. uh yeah that's been a fun one i've been trying to solve the puzzle of why the entps and the enfps why are they always so freaking out about the the data and hiding data uh, or or they're trying to sneak into other people's data and that that's was always something i was like i couldn't quite mathematically makes sense of that like what what is the because it's just like a, a an extreme fear that most of us don't have that mm -hmm. uh somebody is hiding some some data like so what there's data everywhere and I'm watching the uh the tom DeLong guy the blink 182 guy intj guy i think that, that class has come out yet or or uh or shortly if it hasn't but um he's a intj guy and he's like trying to figure out stuff he's like yeah just look at the breadcrumbs just look at all the the this scattered se on the ground then you can piece it together I'm like yeah that like who cares um but really understanding that the ne is really inspired by that si they're, they're by that physical experience so they, they have to you know like you with wine for example it's like okay this physical thing and then this physical thing and then wait a minute if we took this sandwich and this wine and we put these together then now you can see all these like electric possibilities in an extroverted way and then they they all kind of like fall onto the floor it's not like you're taking them and stacking those patterns you know um but when you get very interesting personal sensory and the more of these things that you collect they spark in all these these creative ideas and so then when i kind of had that framework i went back and listened to you know neil degrasse tyson and all these scientist guys and that's exactly what they're constantly saying as i'm just I'm just not hearing it they're like yeah and if we can do this with ai or do this and fly to mars and we can do this then there's this possibility and this possibility and all the rest of us are like yeah great so th there's those possible if you do this sensor you take this rocket and you fly there you're going to have you know these 10 possibilities and more great so what who cares but you're like oh but that's where they're getting their dopamine of excitement and then it's back mm -hmm. to whenever i'm trying to figure out one I'm, I'm 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 going off of another one so i'm like all right any any uh uh okay so another extroverted function and i'm like well let me see let me try se i'm like oh that's kind of hard to figure out too so i jumped over to i jumped over to te and um I worked on that one for a while of like, oh, so that's like with Shan, 
it's like if she if i love someone or love something etc cetera, etc cetera. and i have te as well so i play this game it's like oh then the te is going to be getting a charge by hey i did this and i did this and i did this and i did this why because i care about this person or i care about this thing and so if you want to attack the te you don't attack one of these things up here because it'll just run around you and go work on something else to get the jubilees to get the jollies to get the dopamine if you want to attack the te you attack the fi you be like uh nobody likes you and, and we don't need any work done and and, and, da, da, da. and then the fi collapses and now all the te is just like a flower just like wilts and goes away i'm like oh that's what the ne's are feeling when you attack the si their ne world just collapses oh and yeah they, i see that regularly yeah 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 you would yeah yeah <laughs> and, and like me and dave don't we're like what the hell what are you guys doing because like with, with se yeah SI, what is that yeah and like neutralizing neutralizing savior and demon so like putting you know me and dave se and ni you know that that coin versus the and then you would be in the any any si camp even though you're not a, a crazy observer right um but that's still mechanically you, you yeah you should be like yeah yeah that's what i do you know yeah, so, I, do, I do it to a point. I see Wendy doing it though, because you know she's right. Many, and that's where I say like, yeah, I see it because um, I was telling uh, Jana earlier today. Um, you know, with Wendy, she she'll come at me and she'll be like, any explosion vomit, like of all this, like oh, I found I, I, and it's literally off one headline, or maybe she read something or saw something in the news, and it's just like boom, 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 and you can see her her neurons firing and her dopamine's just going. And I'm like, hold up. And I start interjecting a little SI and she just gets mad. Like, what are you doing? Like, wh why would you say that? You know, and, and you can see everything just kind of shut down. And I'm like, I'm not trying to shut you down. I'm just like, hold on. There's some sense of what you have to respect. And right. Like, no, 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 I'm done. And then she'll walk away. Yeah. Oh, you know? And then, and but conversely, she'll do the same thing to me. I'm like, I've got this SI plan. And it's awesome and it's going to work. And then she's like, but what about this possibility? And she'll just start throwing up the NE, the NE at me. Yeah, right. Shit. You know, and so it, it does go both ways. And that's why I it, I tell people all the time, like with her and I, even though we share this different uh, deciders, but the same observers, right. we usually end up fighting on the observers, not the deciders. Wow, interesting. Yeah. But you kind of check each other, I guess. I mean, does it help? Does it help that she like says like, uh, what about the possibilities and uh, does it yeah. her ever for you to be like here what about the SI? yeah it's or... it's it's always a net gain in the long run That's it's good. just a net loss in the short run usually around the conversation because she's okay. she's been able to come around and say you're probably right it's probably not this crazy it's probably you know the whatever thing she's thinking about and then, and then for me, I'm like, oh yeah, I probably should have considered that as well. Oh yeah, that's actually not a bad backup plan, or you know, whatever. So we're we're able to move along, um, but yeah, I I see that every day. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm I a goal I set for myself back to like the least pain per lifetime. You know, uh -huh. useless pain, definitely yeah. pain for growth, which creates less pain. You know, overall. But um, I really kind of have a standard for myself of like unless i am using these coins in my real life to save my life then i don't really fully know how to use them so for example mm -hmm. i'm starting to see like like i feel like effie i definitely get it and because I, you know double decider i'm like oh if i could spend some time to pay more attention to the tribe's values because I'm, I'm paying attention to a, not that um but if i were to invest some time into going all right let me just masculine sensory remember what they care about and what you care about and then i can <laughs> <laughs> use that spectrum later you know and then i get some some usefulness there and so i've i'm like okay i could do that 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 isn't super far off for me right now what's what's way out it feels like it feels like way out in space land is when the hell would i ever need any si to save my life but i, I feel like like right now our, our buddy michael he's he's got the garage down there he's just going full time into ebay and his business is just it's just taken off like fucking crazy and so like on 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 monday I've got it scheduled of, uh, and what I believe I was kind of thinking through of like, oh, I think I think why I've been stuck here or, or we've been stuck here is like not having the any SI coins or not use or not looking at things in an any SI way. So an example is like it's creating a flow of like he brings all this stuff in and he drops on this table and goes to this station, this station processing photographs, and then it loops back around to the garage and then it goes out. So like a U, like a shipping, yeah. a shipping system, you know, and so. Uh, where we're both having a hard time is I think we're like doing it very like N I S E 
and and therefore it's just like it's getting stuck and it's not it's just it's just not working and so i think i think what i'm going to change it up like all right i'm going to go to home depot and i'm going to get these uniform these uniform style tables we're going to build these very simple uniform style tables and then let's just get about uh, probably like six of these giant tables and then just lay them in the garage and then just keep doing what the nesis do and let's just keep moving them around and discovering the possibilities because what'll happen is like we'll accidentally like we'll accidentally move something like uh we're accidentally like you know dragging something over on the on the little plastic shelf like hey what if this, this thing had wheels on it and like all, the, all of a sudden this physical thing gives you this possibility i don't need to like stack those patterns i don't need that more than once you know so it doesn't go into my ni but it's like not looking at there's all these physical experiences if i were to hit them with electricity and spark new possibilities. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, yeah, that, because it, again, it's coming back to like the, the NISE coins that we both have are, they've, they've taken eBay as far as it can go. And then it's like, it's stuck. We're hitting a wall. Like, you know, mm -hmm. we've been able to map it out and whiteboard it out and put all this SE and but like, yeah. we can't get the, the damn tables yeah. to work. So that's, yeah. that, that's what I'm trying to do is, uh, do I know it enough that I could be like, hold on, and I could go in my bag and come out with these two new coins and and be able to actually use them, you know? Yeah, no, that's good. Like I I see Wendy doing that. I I I always call her NT play as just playing Tetris. She's constantly just playing Tetris with everything. Yeah, right. You know, like I remember one time uh, yeah. last year we were loading up the van with all of her stuff from some big thing, uh, not a conference, but like a. A show where she was at where she had all of her equipment her camera stuff and everything and i was like i'm pretty sure this isn't going to fit in the car and she's like oh no it'll fit and she just kind of looks at it and scans it and she's like she was doing all of what you were saying like let's just keep moving the tables around in yeah. her brain and it right. just happened so fast and she's like no just do what i tell you and i was like okay cool i like i trusted her and i did it i didn't think it was going to work and then boom it was done it worked wow one trip yeah like damn i need yeah some that I know that, yeah, because I, 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 yeah, totally that. Because my my observers will be like, well, the category and the concept and the sensory, and I'll just get stuck and I won't. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. Like once you can identify what people are doing in in the other camp that's working, you're like, all right, mm -hmm. I'm gonna figure that out. I'm gonna steal that. I'm allowed to do yeah. that. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think the back pressure of the goal though is it has to create enough back pressure and enough pain build up to force you to use it because it's like life is so busy and like and this is this is a big thing that like i think people don't really understand about us is like it, it's like we're not doing jack shit for fun or for self-growth or for hey this would be interesting it's it's only all of it has only been like okay i'm so fucked i'm so fucked i'm so fucked how do i get out of this how do, and just saver 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 savers and then you're like all right fine let me try my demons oh my god that works and then now it's like all right now that I'm out of a hole and, and life isn't so bad, let me try something really fancy. Let me, let's try, what's this? NESI? Let me try that. So it's always like, because unless, in, in, in like, like what? Like I wouldn't be learning about NESI. Just yay. Like, no, I'm trying to like get the garage unstuck. Like I have to yeah. like get a damn thing done yeah. and force myself to get the unlock. Because you're never going to like go play around with these things of, I'm going to learn jujitsu just for fun. It's like, no, you're not. You're going to have a deep, <laughs> uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah, I, I hear you. I, um, a couple during COVID, I actually started melting down metal for fun just to see what I could do with it. Like it was, it was totally pointless in my, like my, my one. Don't lie, Nate, you wanted to make a giant sword. I know you. Yeah. That dude, I've point. got like 13 or 14 <laughs> swords, dude. I don't need more. Well, I mean, I could use more, but. You would love another one. Don't lie to me. I, I would. Your own custom made sword? I would like. I don't have a custom made one, but I I should exactly. I should make one and bring you it should, to no, you Scotland. Only one big enough for you to carry, like the <laughs> yeah right. Like yeah. I mean, if you Mister Nine Hundred Max on bench press, yeah, just one oh. that just it just double. You know, this is why I like talking to you, Dave. Every time I talk to you, my bench press just goes up. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it goes up regardless of what I say. I like literally it just it's just a machine, brother. I just, you know, like I mean, you don't know Nate. Nate gets up like at three in the morning. You know, he goes and he lifts dude, heavy. I've been up since goes to work for twenty hours. Comes home two thirty out with the family for twelve hours, and he's just right. He's on his job, man. He's got like a thirty-hour he day. Yeah, yeah. I have a thirty-hour day. That sounds about right. 
Last week, last week it was up early and we did pasta week. So I was doing all kinds of pastas and stuff. He'll do a pasta. He'll do a, what, what, what's your, wait, no, your, your paella weapon of choice is the, is the uh, paella, right? That was yeah. the. Yeah. Yep. Dave, if you ever end up making it over here to the States, I'll make you one. And Dave, if I ever get over to Portland, I'll make you one. You nice. should get both Daves in one place, you know? Let's do so, it. Yeah. Where, Two where Daves don't make a right, as they where, say. Where are you at right now, Dave? I'm in Berlin. I'm still in Berlin. Germany. So. Nice. nice. One day. How, I got to come that? back to see family and stuff eventually. So, I mean, I mean, it's in Texas, but I can. Yeah. And are you speaking German fluent? Not fluent, no, no. I haven't pretty really good. done shit with German recently. But it's pretty. It was pretty good, but I'm in a city that's super international where everyone speaks English. So uh, I get right. Translated quite a bit. Yeah, but I can speak it where I need to. Yeah, I remember that as a kid. They're like, "Hey, in junior high, you got to learn a language," and I was like so scared about that. And I'm just so lucky that it tipped towards English. It's such like a I mean, waste of time. Actually, I learned the language in high school. You forget everything. You learn like "hello" and "thank you." Like that does nothing. It's just a waste yeah. of time. Yeah. Now, like, okay, in Germany, they start you off at like it used to be eleven. Now I think it's five. Where they start teaching you English. So every German's like, yeah, everybody out English. there speaks like that. Two should be three something languages. they do for people in the U.S. I think with Spanish or something like that. I think that would make yeah. sense and to help us evolve culturally because that's kind of the joke in other countries that oh Americans yeah, they're not very culturally aware, right? Because they're not really surrounded by many countries, right? Right. That'd be a good thing. And there's cognitive yeah. benefits to it. You know, if you learn a language in your older age, it cuts down on Alzheimer's by like 50%. Like really? That. That'd be a good thing. Yeah. I, think really. it I mean, anything you learn that's like way out of your comfort zone is going to prevent things like that just from, you know, neuroplasticity and things like this that. This damn ops code, man. I feel like it's still, I feel like, a, like for me, I feel like I, it still hasn't quite, I mean, it's slowed down a little bit, but it's like, it's, I'm not, I'm not used to it. Like, like a, a reference point I use, I'll talk to my mom every six weeks and it's like, mm. so I'll, I'll look at myself, you know, from the, the last conversation I had with her. And it's just like, oh my God, like the amount that I have grown and learned and understood and figured stuff out since the last time I talked to my mom six weeks ago. It's it's just like, it's like, it feels like day to day. You just feel like you suck. It feels like you're not doing anything. It feels like you're just stuck in the same old problems. But then when I get that reference point, I'm like, God damn, that's a lot of stuff. I remember somebody sent me an email. They're like, is it ever, ever okay to stop doing self-growth? And like my body reacted. I'm like, yes. Like I want to like, just give me six months off. I want to stop learning. I want to stop growing. You know, just working out constantly. Just like that, I need yeah. Some, yeah. Just some time. Not the that best, I won't start up again, but like, God damn it. Some of this stuff. You know? The best self-growth is, is fun self-growth where you don't have to be a different person. Yeah, but it's fun to discover and it's fun to like explore these things. You know what I mean? When it comes, I feel like when self growth comes from a place of like my potential or I'm not good enough, you're just going to be chasing a carrot on the stick for the rest of your life. Yeah. And it's like painful. And for what? You're going to die one day. Right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It should be more like a video game. You know, you want to upgrade your character. You want to get a new sword or whatever the fuck. It yeah, that way you like can go that. back to the gym and show off all those little pansy teenagers that are really exactly live. crush them yeah. with your big sword that only you can carry. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep it really dull. So hey, you, you made yourself <laughs> <laughs> more like a club than a sword. Yeah, that'll yeah, work too. That would be even more too, intimidating. You just fashioned a metal club. If it's too sharp, as you, yeah, because you made it yeah. yourself. Yeah, if it's too sharp, sticking out of it. Yeah, your, your you remember, remember the old. Remember the old Ninja Turtles where Leonardo mm -hmm. had the swords, but like he was too much of a nice guy. He never, he would always like hit him oh, with yeah. the flat side or the handle. He would never, okay. he never I like shake. I'm disappointed by that. I'm like. Leonardo, yeah. I need you to fuck somebody up. Yeah. <laughs> you got two katanas, bro. Yeah, yeah. Quit eating pizza, get off your ass. and let's Yeah, that's all he would cut was pizza. <laughs> I totally agree. Okay, can yeah. I can I channel change a bit? Is that okay? Of course. Yeah, yeah. So what I wanted to know personally, and hopefully maybe there's some other lead TIs in the chat, or ISTPs, but... um, So... There seems to be a common trope, and I've looked at my my kind of peers that you've are typed as ISTPs, and they all kind of have the same struggle with when it comes to relationships. Like we just like are just horrible at getting into that in the way that we should. For example, like we have like like Theo Vaughn, you've you probably watched him quite a bit. Yeah, so yeah, nobody knows about his dating life. He won't talk about it. He doesn't have a girlfriend. He doesn't know, he doesn't know what he wants. Blah blah blah. You look at uh, Henry Rollins, who just doesn't like people around him. Uh, uh, the the dirty jobs guy. I think he might have a girlfriend now, but he's also very. He's yeah. like sixteen. He's still like bachelor in it around. Like, 
and for myself, I don't feel like, like, I don't know if I like really want a relationship and I've had them in the past and they've always kind of sucked at some point. And it just, I, I don't know. It just feels like I'm at the crossroads or it's like, I don't know if I'm just not a relationship guy and I just, I just don't need it. Cause I'm never, I feel like I'm never craving that, but there's the other side of it when I can imagine how cool that would be in an ideal situation and how other people have benefited from it. And I'm wondering like, is it is it based off fear? Is there something that like is it a is it a case of like I'm not emotionally developed to really enjoy something like this, or maybe I just, you know, don't really need that, and I'm kind of trying to process that as to where I should go. And I'm assuming you've probably looked at a lot of ICPs, and they probably most of them, not all of them, probably have a similar issue. Are you seeing that yourself? And kind of yeah. what do you feel like the root of the problem of that is? If yeah, it, that's even a, if it is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. that's that's a really good question so like yeah what i was kind of saying earlier of like the uh the the, the forced self-growth or whatever lately like what what i've been secretly consuming non-stop the past couple of months is actually all the relationship podcasts out there and a, a lot of them are done by people that have se and fe in their functions and i'm coming from the 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 mindset of like wait a minute those that do have se fe they are looking at the landscape of relationships in a rather objective way compared to the rest of us, you know? And I know FI gives you a huge disadvantage of INFP syndrome where it's, it's very fairy tale. It's very all in on one person. And so you, you spend this, this horrible amount of, of time in this fake emotional connection of, of all in intensity that really, really, really fucks you up, you know, or, or fucks up FI people, you know? And so um, I, I, I have uh, been seeing that more, like the problem with FI and not looking at the, the landscape of relationships and stuff like that. So that's why I've been just watching tons of these podcasts and like listening to them for the first time all over again, even though I've been hearing what they're saying for years, you know. Um, and then the thing that I'm kind of layering on top of that is uh, the, the, the social coins were a big uh, realization the past few years. They've changed our lives dramatically, and not only being able to see and understand ourselves, but each other in our family and our relationship and friends and in our workplace, it's it's created a lot of painful unlocks for us in, in a very good way. But they they are they're rather rather huge change, and it's also fascinating with the social types of like how reverse it is because it's like the social types are so big and so obvious and so easy, and I can't watch somebody's video at all right now without seeing their social types or like people come back for like a, a recheck or their type or somebody that we typed a couple of years ago. And I'm like, Oh my God, how, what, how, what was I, how do I, what was I, I, I watched this person's video two years ago and I didn't know social types. Like what the hell was I looking at? Their whole life, their whole story is about, you know, being a number three or four or whatever their, their social type is. And you can't not see it. And so I've been quietly kind of thinking to myself along that pattern of, the most obvious coins are the ones right here. You know what I'm saying? And, and we're blind to it. I'm like, oh shit. I think probably the biggest coins that have the most to do with stuff is man and woman, the relationship thing. And I, I know there's a spectrum and all that, but I think I think that, that all these like dating podcasts and all these, these, you know, STPs that are talking about relationships and men and women and all that kind of dynamic and the old nuclear family of, you know, the, the man's role and the woman's role. Like, I just haven't been looking at that because I'm like, uh, that doesn't really matter. And there's a spectrum. And, you know, and anyways, these coins over here are far more interesting. And so I'm now starting to kind of see and kind of I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I think um, the 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 so so my conclusion here that I that I'm just starting on. So we'll see where this ends up in the next year is um coming from one extreme of of my first starting point is as bad as bad as it can get as like savior masculine fi so my starting point of relationships is they have to be magical they have to be disneyland you have to find your soulmate infp and if you don't you suck and so that's been like slowly eroding away but i haven't been like consciously looking at that because i'm looking at all this other cool more interesting stuff so i haven't really been working on that and then on where, where this is possibly um, going to is, is really kind of seeing and realizing that, especially getting older, you know, like mid forties, the, the chemical cocktail starts to wear off. And so you start to see Shan and you start to see other females. You start to see people as like, oh, wait a minute. You're not like a hot, attractive girl that has power over me. You're just a normal person. And you start to kind of see through, you're like, wait, so why? what's all this chemicals about? And like, you start to see like, oh, that's just another, I don't want to say it, but it's like, this is another evolutionary trick 
of like, if you're OI, I got to go out and I got to organize. And if you're a man, you got to go out and you got to find this and you got to go find this if you're a female or, or whatever the, the spectrum is, you know? And so kind of see like, oh, uh, those two also are kind of programs that I need to be aware of. And again, it's not that as an IJ, I don't do IJ stuff. It's just don't do it unconsciously out of control and wreck your stupid life. And, you know, as, as a man that wants a wife, it's not, it's like, it's not don't become a monk and don't have a wife, but it's also like, don't just let that program run out of control. Like it's completely, totally fucking real. Cause, and cause that's where I'm that's, getting that's a lot of question, I guess. Like, what is the program for like Effie at the bottom? Do you feel like that is preventing relationships? If that is a preventer, do you I, I guess where I'm, where I'm, where I'm, related I'm as well, or yeah, I guess, I guess where I'm, I guess where I'm going to is like, I, 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 I would have a couple of years ago, I would have said that, you know, everybody should be in a happy, balanced relationship. And obviously if you don't, then we're not reproducing the world that the population is going down. So that's, that's not good. But then um, it's hard for me now to, to meet different people and they're going like, yeah, I don't know if the like Mike Rose, a great example. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if really relationships are for me. And he's always been very honest. He's like, yeah, I'm just kind of a selfish guy. I just kind of want to do my career. I believe him yeah, to be a that's how I feel. Type. That's exactly how I feel. Like, it's not yeah. even that I, like, I'm like, oh, I just want to date without commitment. I just, I don't even know if I want to date. I think I just yeah. want to just, just chill by myself and just have yeah. And yeah. I'm wondering like if, if, if fear is like clouding my judgment or maybe that's just what I really want. And I, I think it time. might be, uh, so that, that's the thing that I'm starting to see is that is early on, if you were 20 and you were saying that, uh, I would say you're immature, you're imbalanced, you're an idiot. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But then, but what I'm seeing though is I'm seeing older, wiser, and, you know, yourself included, like older, wiser, self growth people. Like, look, look, I know I'm a selfish ass, and I know I got problems, but they're still, they're still starting to consciously decide and choose. They're like, and I, I know I could. I mean, if I have to, I will. But uh, I don't know if, if I really want to. If I, if I really need to do that, if I really want to do that, if I have to do that, you know. So. I, I think um, it, it uh, the, the, the 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 other weird extreme is like if if we don't if we all don't do it if we all don't reproduce then the population collapses so it's not for everybody you know but yeah if, to, you're, in to same, give... if you're in the same predicament what do you go for is, is is sort of processing there like where do you hone in on like do you, is this like a like a sleep thing is this an fi thing or is like what if you're in the same predicament that I am what would be your go to to figure out what it is you should really do in this kind of scenario yeah Which i know it's, it's a bit of a weird translation because i with with our different functions and stuff but yeah maybe no i i, I know what you're saying i i think i think if you're at the point where if 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 you don't really want to go out and pursue a relationship you don't really have to and that doesn't mean there's anything off or weird or, or you know or your demon fe or whatever like i think i think what might be kind of happening because i'm also looking at like um you know, you're looking at these 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 polls that they'll take of especially the young kids. You know, like I talked to Cody's generation. He's like, oh yeah, I'm never getting married. And I'm like, oh yeah, tell me tell me why. Tell me what you're seeing. He's like, oh yeah, marriage is fake. People just fight. You know, it's it's all my friends. And then I'm like, oh you you see through the evolutionary trick. You see the statistics that most people that get married are fucking miserable. He's like, yeah, duh, obvious. I have TikTok. I know. And I'm like, my generation, I didn't like. Uh, we didn't see through that illusion. And so I think for a lot of people, they're able to kind of see down the corridor of time and they're like, well, if I do date and if I do get married and I do have relationships, I just know myself enough to know that I'm not going to be happy and I'm going to make that person miserable and I don't want to stay with somebody yeah. for 50 years. And don't we grow and change? And statistically, this doesn't even happen, and, you know, and they're just kind of looking at that going, I mean, I could I could be a helicopter pilot, too, but I'm not going to put in the work to do it. That doesn't make me a bad person or whatever. So I think honestly, a lot of people are kind of just looking at that and going, I, I I could, but I don't think I really want to invest the time to do that. You know, I think that's yeah. just where a lot of people are at. And so I'm I'm starting to kind of see that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and understand. Yeah, so, it's kind of the, the the crux of it. And then like Sasha pointed out, when you know, that's when you actually find someone you don't want to. So it's oh, a question I know, right? of like, did you find the you had just haven't found the right person yet? And it's that, like, that's, well, that's really yeah, good. Yeah. Who said I, that? like, yeah, I don't know. Like I, for me, I'm not a like I don't 
I'm not afraid of like dying alone or like being old and not having a partner. I am afraid of not having people in my life or having friends. And right. Stuff, but I was not, just like, going to say that, I, I, you know, because we've talked about this before, too. I, I just wonder, too, if it's just a matter of finding the tribe for you. And if that's sufficient, then great. Yeah. 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 Like I've said, I've said it before and I, I mean it. Like if you were close, if we live like close together, I'd be like, hey, kids, Uncle Dave's here. Uncle Go Dave. <laughs> You hey know. kids, you want to try some whiskey? No. no, no. <laughs> yeah. Now you have to be careful of me because I would try to be the uncle I never had. I wanted that crazy uncle that would get me into trouble and stuff. Yeah. I never had that. You probably would be the uncle that'd get him in trouble. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're 11. You're old enough for a cigarette. Why not? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, hey, hey, uh, going off of what Sasha says. Um, yeah. One thing I do see in just my own, this is all like, this is all like fresh NIFI. So don't, don't just everybody delete all this after you hear me say it. No, this is real. Don't, don't hold me to it. But like one of the things I'm kind of playing around with in my NIFI is I'm, I'm looking at, I'm just calling it personally the David Hasselhoff effect. So this is NI at the top. The, the, the sensory does not back this up. Don't call me on this. Don't investigate David Hasselhoff because probably all of this is true. Uh, not true, but I'm just looking at the concept. If I saw David Hasselhoff and Anne Hathaway, I randomly saw some clips of her. Now, again, if you do the sensory, maybe they're completely shitheads and they're horrible people in real life and they have a horrible relationship. I don't know. But there's just this concept that I'm starting to see. Uh, what Sasha said of like, yeah, when you go through this process of kind of letting go and I don't need anybody and I got to be happy on my own and I got to stop being so needy and tearing them down and going on these, these wild emotional drama relationships and you finally get to the point to where you are very happy by yourself and you love yourself and you love hanging out with yourself and you feel proud about yourself and you don't need anybody that uh, that is what does tend to happen is you're david hasselhoff and you're walking through the airport and then you meet her and you're like fucking 70 with like five divorces under your belt and alcoholism and, and you had to go through all this hero's journey to finally because that is not the joke of all this stuff like how do i get the most control in my life i just learned to not <laughs> want control and just accept the chaos right yeah and so that is something that uh, I'm still having a hard time seeing. But um, yeah. the more but control, I, the more chaos there is. I, and I, I think the, I think because, right. you know, like it's something like you, Dave. It's like if you play it out, if you're like, yeah, you know, I don't I don't think uh, I really want a relationship. I'm just going to work on myself and be happy with who I am. Like that is then creating a, a, a positive tidal wave of it is creating a lot of attraction that, you know, your chances of meeting somebody in the grocery store are pretty high, you know, so that. that that, that's the fun switcheroo of the universe, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's been some interesting yeah, dating dynamics in that case where it's usually I'm the guy that's like, yeah, you know, I don't know about this. And then, I don't know, you end up hurting someone. And then it just that's just been, yeah, constant cycle. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, I think you got to choose if, if that's what you want. And I think there's more and more people these days that are kind of forming an FE society that are like you know what it's okay that i don't choose a long uh, relationship or marriage and it's not because i'm hurt or upset or mad it's just that i'm just choosing that i don't want to put that into my life i want to put it into myself or i want to put it into my business or whatever you know that's that seems to become a little bit more normal so much so the population is declining rapidly and we should be worried about that <laughs> i got six kids i got you both covered We're good. yeah thank you thank you that's, that's a good point that's a good point i think we're gonna cash in on that okay I think Rose, I, I didn't read this question all the way, but I think it relates. So not an observer existential way, but isn't it possible that nothing you're supposed to do is real? Do you need type or binaries uh, to see that? Um, isn't it? Um, I guess for me, there's not a supposed to. For me, it's just like, am I, am I blind? Am I like, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it's a similar thing to, to most situations in life where it's like, I don't want to go to the gym, but when I go, it's great. And I love it. And I'm happy I went, but there's a part of me. It's like, no, no gym. Why is yeah. Why does that exist? If I know that I like it. Right. Yeah. And, and then that covers is like, maybe there's a, an amazing relationship out there waiting for me and due to my own bullshit, I'm just, not, I'm just doing this. Right. And then it's yeah. like, you know, I guess that's the, I don't know if that's exactly what you were pointing out Rose, but. Well, yeah. I think I think the the crux of it though too is kind of what going back to um, uh, Sasha's uh, comment earlier, just working on yourself and making sure that you like you are a complete whole person that is happy on your own, right? Regardless of whether that leads to a relationship or not, 
because like you are the most important person right yeah yeah no i agree yeah if you're i and at this point in time i am very satisfied with you know with who i am and, and my situation but i won't be the same person 20 years from now and so will that same person when i'm too old to date or, or find people be like you know it would have been great if i'd have found somebody not that's you, something that i have a hard time be more handsome knowing right i guess yeah <laughs> Yeah, no that that'd be a good that'd be a good thing to wrestle with right there, Dave. Is is trying to get answers from your future self, you yeah. know, from from a, a future point of view. I I do. I'm always a, a sucker for watching the videos on TikTok of like the nurses that work at the hospital with people that die on their deathbed. I found it's fascinating that that story is never consistent. You know, the five regrets of the dying are greatly tampered with by the the point of view of the, the of the nurse or of, of, yeah. of whoever is telling the story so uh, i try and watch a lot of them to get the, yeah. the spectrum also up. i feel like it's a bit ridiculous it's like will you regret this on your deathbed why do you give a fuck you're gonna be, you gonna be dead for like minutes. an hour or something like, <laughs> right you know, i know they're really like you just you'd be regretting for an hour like i know fine. I totally thought of that. <laughs> not that big of a deal. Like, I got just, other problems. I'm not yeah. worried about my deathbed. I'm worried for like 20 years of like, yeah, I fucked up. That's, but not that's really, deathbed because deathbed it's over anyway. Who cares? That's yeah. such a good point. That, uh, thank you. I'm not the only one that has thought about that. I'm like, well, I'll be dead in five minutes. Who cares? But but I think it's I think it's a great. <laughs> I think I think it is really good to try and like because because we're all sitting here based upon the decisions that our 25 year old version kid version of ourselves did. It's is where we are here, and so. And it is a deep exercise in like self and I, but I think it's worth trying to really struggle with that of going, yeah, what will I want in 20 years? I, I do have to set up that future person for that. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think that's definitely a good question that's worth fighting for and figuring out, you know, and then like we we're saying earlier, like constantly being uh, uh, adjusting, you know, yeah. you, don't have to, you don't have to get that right the first time. Yeah. yeah. That, I think the, you... the, the issue is not what you failed to do when you're on your deathbed. The issue is that you're, you have an issue with that. The issue itself that you have an issue is the issue. Not yeah, so yeah. You just like, you know what I mean? That's the yeah, yeah thing. I just, yeah, I guess, yeah, I just don't want a long string of years where I'm like, but I don't know. I've never had that though. I've never had regret. Like I don't regret anything. Yeah, I've never right. been in a space where I'm like, oh, I should have done that and should have done this. Because even if you say like, oh, I should have done this, whatever that should is completely changes the trajectory of your right. life. And it could change it in a way that just sucks ass. And you don't even know. Right. It. Right. Like, totally. There's no point. And you couldn't have done it differently anyway. So there's no point in saying like, eh, right. I, I feel the same way. I don't, I don't play the no regret way. game. Right. Yeah. That kind of goes into the whole, we don't have free will thing a, a bit as well. Right? <laughs> it's yeah. Like, it's like, if you repeated that same scenario where you should have done something different a million times with all variables intact, you would have done the same thing. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess us as a society kind of just zooming out the timeline a little bit like we are definitely our, our, our society is really struggling with deep questions that society's never struggled with before or hasn't in thousands of years because it's like re reverse the clock just 100 years ago or a couple hundred years ago like no, nobody be sitting around like having discussions about what should I do with my life it's like the 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 fucking the enemy is coming over the hill next month this is what you're going to fucking do like uh, our lives were just about survival and family and reproduce maybe go to church and like Everything was very much, it took away all the choice, but it made life very simple and it made yeah. life very meaningful because it was just a very, you're only playing one game. And so I think mm -hmm. like this generation, now that, that now that society has like this tree that has like blossomed right before it like rots and, and turns into something else or whatever, is we all are sitting around with a lot of time on our hands and, and a lot more years than, you know, decades live to 90 rather than 30, mm -hmm. you know? And so for myself, I, I did kind of realize this quite a few years ago. And I'm like, oh, evolution's responsibility was to get me to here or get the human species all the way to here or, or get me to 25. And I really take on seeing all this crazy stuff that I am consciously responsible now that you can see the code and now you got so many years to live and you don't have to you don't have to get married. You don't have to fight the enemy. You don't have there's nothing you really have to do anymore. The, the survival pressure is off of us. And therefore, I have to choose, OK, which path, which adventure do I have to create for myself? Because before evolution would set up a path like you're doing this, you know, because that's what was going on at that time. So I think it is a, a very important thing for all of us to choose our own paths in life, because at this time in history, um, the world is not being forced on. It's like, like the poor kids in Ukraine right now, like they're not getting sitting around deciding what they want to do with their life. It's getting 
ch chosen for them, you know? Yeah. So definitely There's like almost a sense of calming and happiness in that sort of calamity. And exactly what I'm me, saying. As it, like maybe as an SC where it's sometimes like if things was went to shit, that would be so peaceful. And I know that sounds just, crazy, but like yeah. you're just so honed in on the basics. Yeah. Like you're not like wondering about what all these abstract questions of stuff and you're just mulling around your mind all the time. It's like no, we just there's a tornado, right? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you're not worried about any of that stuff. Very much that, man. Yeah. Very much that. Yeah, yeah. We recently had to let our little uh, our little buddy squirrel, little Maisie baby, go uh, a few days ago, and um, you know, very sad. But miss her a lot. We'll probably see her again. She's in the neighborhood, you know. But um, springtime and all. But it was very fascinating. Wait, to so watch. wait. Let me, let me impact that. You had a pet squirrel that you yeah. released into the wild. Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah. We had her. Yeah, we've had her here since last summer. The end of last summer. So, so we've oh, raised okay. her up. Yeah, she's been a been a little pet, but a little friend of the family, little little cute buddy. Oh, and so that's squirrel, that's amazing. Yeah, oh, she's, she's really good. I'd love to have a squirrel as a pet. Okay, but she uh, didn't like die. Like you just went out and got yeah, to yeah, out. yeah. Okay, that's great. A, I mean, yeah. So it's it a, it a great baseball. like um, human watching human watching the ni because it's like we get this baby squirrel and, and she was just a little tiny infant, you know, just fell out of the tree, didn't have her eyes open, I had to give her the nurse bottle and stuff like that. And this, this is like in uh, July or August, September or whatever. And so within a few months, she starts to grow up and then she's just kind of a, a squirrel. It's like, whoa, a room, a chair, and like everything's new. And, and, and then pretty soon she gets to go downstairs. And so like her world is like opening up. And then what was fascinating is, is to watch her. She would just like, you know, take nuts and, and hide nuts around the house or, take Kleenex boxes and tear them up and build little nests. And so it's like just watching these programs that are just set to run. And then, um, then, then just recently now that she's older, you know, cause they grow up so fast. Right. And that uh, now that it's springtime, she's been like looking outside, like, Hey, let's go. It's time to go out. It's time to go outside. Like, yeah, I know. I knew this day would come. It's very sad. But to, to watch, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of other squirrels in the back. I was like six of them feeding them all the time, trying to, trying to create a, a squirrel hangout. So when Maisie makes nice. the loop, she'll come back around or whatever. But um, watching the squirrels, like how much they work in their environment. Like they're just these little Roomba toys that they're designed to like hop, 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 dig, 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 bury, hop, 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 make a nest, hop, hop, hop. And they just run these programs. And when you have a squirrel trapped in a house, after a few months, you, you can see that energy start to, you know, She's like, what am I? What am I supposed to do all day? What I, yeah. I want to go climb a tree. I want to, and then they like take the squirrel outside, and then like all of a sudden the program does what it's been doing for millions of years. And then it's just run around the neighborhood, and all of a sudden all those programs work. I'm like, God damn, isn't that not, isn't that isn't that exactly how we as humans feel? Just kind of like stuck, bored in the house. And like, well, I'm an IJ, but I don't have anything to build, and I, I have FI, but I don't have uh, you know a relationship or whatever, you know, and just kind of seeing that that contrast for uh, us humans, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's cool. You can extract a more larger philosophical question from raising a squirrel. Of <laughs> I guess course. Like an IFI, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to, so, okay. So 50 minutes ago, you said you had an hour. So I guess we're getting probably close to time. Yeah. I'm yeah. Gonna pee real quick. I'm Nate. I don't know if you had any other topics to bring up, but maybe when I get back or y'all can discuss something and then we can take some questions from, from people if that's okay. Great. I got the chat open. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, y'all, um, Nate, if you had something else to, to ask, feel free uh, chat. Also, uh, put in your questions. You have some questions for Dave. I'll, I'll be right back in like two minutes. Sweet. Oh. Okay, cool. Uh, so I, I have people asking Dave. They're very curious on uh, Dave's social type. And we all think he's probably a four. but Oh, Dave of all Daves? Yeah, yeah. right. He's very friendly. Yeah. Yeah, right. Friendly. And then what's his job? He's uh the he engineer. does like IT stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, prob probably that. Yeah. That makes That's sense. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of what we figure. So. yeah. Yeah, that'd be uh I, I realized Mike Rowe. I've always been following Mike Rowe for all these years. I'm like, oh, that's why he's such a fucking friendly son of a bitch. Like because I always try to make sense of like how is this I ISTP so goddamn friendly? Yeah, like, yeah save your friends, you know. Yeah. Um I was watching Tim Ferriss yesterday and mm -hmm. uh, Tim Ferriss, who it's funny that because uh, I'm trying to like expand knowing that the social types, it's now like expansion time. So like, mm -hmm. you know, everybody will be like, oh, I learned one thing and I'm going to lock it down. I'm like, OK, I've learned to like as much as I want to do that. I don't know what the social types are yet. I do know if I mm -hmm. stay open if within a few years, I'll be able to do it. Sure. So it's like seeing things that don't fit in my worldview, like Tim Ferriss, but Tim mm -hmm. Ferriss, who is like a. Uh, 
uh, an archetype for entrepreneurship, an archetype for right, number right. two. But yeah. but as I watch this stuff, I'm like, no, he is a three, but he's like, he's yeah. doing the three game. And then he's like, sees the two game. Um, and so I'm like, okay, so how would you define that? Because if you're like, oh, a, a number two is an entrepreneur and a three is a specialist. Like, okay, what do you do with Tim Ferriss? Like, fuck, what do I do with Tim Ferriss? It's like, yeah. oh, here's what you do with them is it, it there's that cutoff with the management seeing that the the, the specialists they they really want to keep their management yeah. low because tim ferris was famous for like just making these wildly successful businesses <laughs> and then he right. would just get in his yeah. motorcycle and drive off and he would see him for like two years he'd be like yeah. gone like writing another book and like seeing that so I've been able to get down the coin of the the generalist versus specialist coin of of um seeing that the the specialists don't really want to manage people a lot one other point just kind of ranting on the social types i'm also seeing with myself and, and other young kids and very true of shan is that say say you're a one or a two that doesn't mean that necessarily you want to be managing people right away because i didn't really realize that about myself until very recently because like when i was younger i wasn't managing anybody i didn't want to manage anybody but i also had this frustration and anger that i didn't know what was going on there Mm -hmm. And as I've had different jobs over the years, and then with the realization of the social types, I'm like, oh, wait, so I am the manager? I do want to manage people? I do? I, oh, I thought I, I hate managing people. Wait, I'm good at this? And then, you know, so it's allowed me to yeah. become the manager. And it's just absolutely unlocked stuff in our life so much the past six months. And now I'm able, I've got like three or four people that we're working with, you know, part time that we're going to be moving them to full time. It's like now the, the workflow is moving just because of these these shifts and stuff. So I was talking to one kid last night and he's like, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm like, Hey dude, you're fucking 23. Like, like you're, it will. Cause he's like, I don't know if I'm a three, then I should, should I do my business? I'm like, yeah, you should do your damn business. You should, mm -hmm. you should keep expanding and do as much crazy shit as you want. Especially if you're fucking 23, you got, you got 10 years free to go do whatever you want, you know? Right. But then just to, to watch for is if you are a social type three, do watch that probably what will happen is as you get older and as you build your business and as you start to hire on more people or whatever you'll probably get to the point to where you're like all right 10 is enough people or whatever i want to i want to move myself over here and then hire mm -hmm. a manager and then let them go and that's what i now when i i like looking at like this this company here interior services the the blinds company like that's what happened there it's happened with my dad like the the boss is actually the same type as you t-i-s-i -S -I, but a blast mm -hmm. last and uh number three guy built up the business hit a wall hired ones and twos takes off 50 people there and then just moves himself off yeah. to the side you know so anyways the management managing people um is is a is a good coin to look at for the the general versus specialist you know one of the things i've been looking at with the type with the social types is just using my type as the reference point and saying okay i know what i'm doing what is everyone else not doing that i'm doing and so like I was I was talking to Jana again today about it and because she's a two and I've noticed with Jana when it comes yeah. to being social time, like Jana wants to do social time. It's not that she doesn't want to do it, but it's I got this other stuff to do first. Once that's done and I'm feeling comfortable now, social time's OK. Right. Whereas with me, I'm like, how can I integrate social time? Assuming I actually want to be social. Right. But like in the farm, if I'm if I'm working in the pharmacy, like I can go counsel a patient, take a phone call respond to a text, counsel a patient, go to the drive through talk to a doctor, respond to a text. I can do that all day long, right? Right. Because I'm staying connected. And then I look at Wendy, conversely. I'm guessing Shan's probably similar. Um, so you can tell me if I'm right or wrong on this. But I see Wendy, and it's just like with, with – she wants to be social, but it's not on her mind actively. Right. Like at all. It's I got to do these things with yeah. work. I've got to take care of the house. I got to take care of the kids. I got to do all of these things. And then maybe once all that's done, I can start thinking about hanging out with friends. Maybe. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if Shan's like that at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Very much. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then I'm, and I'm the one having to push her. It's like, no, everything's going to be fine. Like the house will take care of itself. The kids are fine. They can watch each other. Let's go out and hang out with your friend. And and every time she comes back, she's like, I'm glad we did it, but I feel a little weird about it. I haven't socialized in a while. And and, and so that that's what I've been doing with it. Just saying, what is everyone else doing that I'm not? And yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. I, I see that the 
from for me as a two, I relate closely to the fours and I see the threes a lot of times. The ones and threes seem to be very similar because our, our editor, Caitlin's a three. And so it's like, it's funny. I've told this story before. It's like when we're on a conference call with mm -hmm. Shan, Caitlin, and me, it's like, you know, I have friends second, Caitlin has friends third, Shan has a fourth. So it's like, guess who's the goofball pretty fucking quick on the call? Me, not them. And because I, I can watch them and see that like from the social type perspective, they're like, hey, I got this to do, this to do, this to do, this to do. Yeah. And then we'll be friends at the end. And then the, yeah. the fucking desperate idiot twos and fours are like friends right away. And the ones and threes are like, no, Dick, friends later. Like, let's get yeah. this shit done. And so I'll feel that too, because I'll, I'll get frustrated with the fours. Whether I'm like, look, I want to do friends too, but we got to get something done, jackasses. Right, right, you know, right, right. I feel that I want to play too, you know, but I, I definitely, yeah. and that's where I will get aggressive if like, if somebody is not in, like ops or self growth or or something in my responsibility circle. Like, no, I, I can't be. I can be fake friends with them, but real quick, I don't want to be friends. But as long as they're inside, kind of similar to what you're saying. But the work does come first, like Jana. Like, I got to do the work, and then the friends is is second. So I get it. I get what it feels like to have something above friendship. You know, of like, mm -hmm. yeah, fuck off. I got to get this done. And then just seeing the ones and threes like have an extra couple of layers to it yeah. is is kind of how I look at it. You know, and so. What Shan's always said, and I and I feel this way to some degree, not as much as her, of like, yeah, we can be friends. And in TI, you'll feel this way. Like, I'll, we'll be friends when the work is done. Like, let's get the work done. Let's get the 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 flex and all the stuff done, and then we can have the friendship uh, later. You know, mm -hmm. and that makes sense. You know, but yeah. yeah, with the with with the fours and twos, it's the it's the flex. I think the demon flex is what I think gets us into a lot of trouble as twos and fours because it's like. Uh, you know, we forget to set goals. We forget to see what we want to do. Even even with masculine DI savers, we're still just kind of like, I don't know. I'm just doing my job. And, you know, your job is going to be a little bit more OI. My job's a little bit more, you know, extroverted. Mm -hmm. But we're still just like, I don't know. I just get up every morning and I work on stuff. And, and the mm -hmm. ones and threes are like, okay, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> and they're like, they're more goal-driven. They'll focus. They'll kind of get their stuff done. They're keeping track. They're competitive. You know, I'd be, you've been listening to a lot of Andrew Tate. He words, uses the words competitive a lot. I'm like, right. I never think about competitiveness. I know that's S E F E. You know, it's like, yeah, competitive. I got to be competitive. I just keep forgetting about that, you know? Yeah. So, like me with him and his level of narcissism, there's, there's always competition no matter what. <laughs> yeah. That's why I, I like looking at the, uh, give me somebody with a, with a, like a straight deck of cards on, on, on something like double masculine, number one, narcissistic, blah, 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 blah. Like you to give me a, the pure version of of that kind of uh, energy because I want to be able to see that and then then reflect on myself and be like yeah I don't really I don't really do that you know yeah as I noticed much. that with a lot of like lead TIs as well where there's a constant competition on <clears throat> how competent you are or how smart you are or whatever the fuck because yeah. you have to have that to to get the tribe to 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 like you or whatever and I feel like yeah that's a constant thing we're doing where it's like we're competing with everyone and most people are like well why are we competing and they don't even know that that's a game that's being played but we're playing that game for whatever reason i feel like yeah, yeah. That, that's definitely a hard one just just real quick i've I, I find that i'm you know like any any skill you get into you know it's the the dunning cougar kroger effect where yeah you know, dunning kruger effect yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like as the more you know you're like oh shit but like i'm, I'm starting to see that these coins they're actually very simple they're very you know, introvert, extrovert, masculine, feminine. That's about it. I forget which one's at the core. It might be masculine, feminine. And then the second is introvert, extrovert. Because like things like OI and sleep, very much the same. Uh, gather, OE, consume, very much the same. So what are, what are the differences of those? Like like for myself, uh, I've got like triple, I have like demon OE, demon sensory, and demon consume. It's like, well, how are those not all the same? And it's like, I had to really take the time to understand the differences between those, even though they seem very, very similar. So you say something like competitiveness or competition, and it's like the masculine TIs will do that, the flex will do that, but then there's like different aspects of that. So I do like to look at somebody that has a straight flush where they're like, like Andrew Tate's great, because it's like double masculine, number one, uh, TI, DI. So I can see a really pure, pure, example. pure yeah. example. And then when I look at somebody mm -hmm. like Shan, there's a lot of you know, mismatches going on there. And so, because like, for example, like Mike Rowe is a good example, like Mike Rowe being a, a um, he should be a very DI competitive. He's got the SEFE functions. He's got masculine TI at the top. He's audio. Like, so there should be a lot of 
masculinity and I'm better than you. And there is that in him. There is. Right? He's got some flex to him. I've been watching his video. Yeah. There's like, he's not, well, I mean, he's not super arrogant or like, he's not like, got like a narcissist, but like he is constantly saying like, by the way, I did this, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. He's, yeah. Right. And I think he's savior friends too. So he's not, he's, he's also, he is, he is finding a way to kind of do his flex and kind of do his TI and, and, you know, play, but he's also making sure that when he's at the fucking factory, like that's what you see with him. It's like, when he's at the factory, he makes sure that we're all buddies. He's yeah. really good at keeping the friends thing. Uh, he's a great very, guy. I really like him. He really is. is. He exactly. really is. Yeah. So he's he's hard to, without the social type, somebody like Mike Rowe is hard to figure out. And that's what, what you, uh, me and Nate were talking about when you were, you were gone for a second. Of like, yeah, Mike Rowe being a, an ISTP and then save your friends makes sense of the past 20 years of watching the guy like because why why is mike Rowe been so interesting and legendary it's like well he's an istp who is better than everybody but he's so damn friendly like what is that about and so anyways the point is like being able to see that we as humans it makes sense in your normal life where you're going to have one program that says i don't want to eat the junk food and you're going to have another program that says i want to eat the junk food and that's completely right. normal that you're going to have different programs you're going to have one program that says I want to be a masculine DI asshole. And then you're going to have another program and say, I want to be friends. I want to mm -hmm. be friends. And those are going to constantly contradict. And I think that's what creates a lot of interesting personality dynamics is seeing it. Cause I, I think the tribe watching us, oh, probably all three of us, it's rather fun and interesting, entertaining for them to watch. Here's these three masculine DI guys that are, are selfish, but they're also trying in their desperate way to be friends. That, that yeah. creates a, an interesting, you know, <laughs> personality. It creates, creates a conflict in some ways. Yeah. yeah. Right, which right. segues me into a, like a good uh, or a like question that's personal to me before we, I guess, go for the the general yeah. question. So, like you, I think so. Somebody told me uh, in the summer of last year that it was an ENFP, and he had a call with you, and you were mentioning um, people that were savior friends, and you mentioned me, and I was wondering, is that kind of the read you had on me? Yeah, I think so. Question? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's what yeah. we were talking about when you left. Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay, well, I missed that. But, yeah. yeah. I was yeah, you see, you seem to seem to have friends. Yeah, I would say, I'd say you're on the the friendly spectrum. Absolutely, setting up the That's podcast. What I was I was thinking that as well. I was gearing more towards a four, but like I also don't have a, a like a super high level of confidence in seeing myself in these ways because they're like I do want to be a four, so I have to yeah. acknowledge that. But yeah, yeah I feel like that. that yeah, that's what I was asking. Like, and then your job is engineering. It seems to be like the the. the what was it flores was had a good example that i've been using where it's like the the generalists are like okay so here's here's the map here's what needs to be done and the specialists yeah. are like okay great i'll do it but then don't tell me how to do it because then the all that hyper responsibility goes in that that oh, yeah field. It, it messes with you it, it screws it up it, yeah and it, and it gives you a lot of conflict and, and and a lot of like anxiety when it's like well it's like just give me this small little thing that i can just focus on trust me i'm going to do it well but if you the if you mess with it, then it's gonna mess with me, and it's gonna be harder for me to really dive into this thing. Right, right. Well, what I've been this doing? What then tell me? Tell me if this sounds good. Well, we'll see how it goes. But what I've been doing with the the people that we're hiring here and with the social types is like, so I got an editor. She's a three. I got kind of um, assistant helping me with the video typing system, and, and then also kind of building out the profiles and all that kind of stuff. And she's a four. And so what i'm seeing is i'm kind of making this trade where because they're they're into ops and stuff i'll i'll tell them just enough of number two land i'll tell them i'll just give them little updates i keep it really short about once a week but i'll give them a little updates on like okay here's what's going on and all the things that are moving around all the change and stuff and so i'll let them see the big giant whiteboard of number two land so they know they know why i'm jerking their chain why i'm like hey we said we're gonna so do they this can hone in on a certain aspect of that themselves right kind of, right right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah exactly so they can grow their number two-ness or whatever which is what they yeah. want to do because they don't want their title waves. but then with that fair exchange i feel like what it it's then giving me now the ball's back in my court that when when uh caleb the editor is like yeah so this this i've and i'll be like well i i've been editing for 20 years and i think and i go wait a minute she actually is deep diving this more. And so I made this shift in my mind and maybe this will blow up on my face, but I don't think so. I think this is going in the right direction. I'm like, because she knows not only what's going on in editing and she's listening to stuff outside her realm, she's listening to my number two bullshit, that when it comes to this department, I am just going to make the shift in my mind that she's the boss. And just making that little shift has allowed me to not be uh, an obnoxious, over-controlling ass. Like I was going through um, 
we got all these uh, uh, TikToks. I got like 240 TikToks ready to go. So I was going through the list just to see if there's any that I didn't want to air. There's like eight of them. So uh, I'm, I know it's just like a squirrel. <laughs> I've been storing them up for a fucking year now. And so, um, so like on the Google Doc, I would like do the file number and then I would link it you know, like normally. And then I would put a space because I don't like it if you write on the, and then like the, then the rest of the text is all hyperlinked. I fucking hate that kind of shit. Like this. And so like when she started taking it over, she just has this other way of like, she links the file thing straight to the Google Drive. So it has a different type of format. So I like to come in and I'm like, this is different. This is this is new. And, and then like I go to like highlight something, but I can't on this one because of that. And so like everything in my stupid triggering IJ is just wants to like control the situation and tell her like, hey, let's do the links this way, not that way. Just and then like the problem is if I if I do that, you're wasting a coin. You can you can only bug somebody so many times per month before they're like, oh, great, this guy who's always bugging me for something. So I don't want to waste a coin, you know? But anyways, that shift of, hey, she's the boss in editing. If she wants to do the links that way, you move, you adjust. This is her land, you know? And so that's, that's yeah. um, I feel like it's- I feel like, yeah, the delegation is generally <laughs> a good principle to follow, right? Yeah. You come up with the issues mm -hmm. and you point them to the issue, but then you don't control how they solve the issue, right? Right. I mean, there's right. only so much you can right. put your energy to and- and but so but right, like every way is to like uh, identify the problem and then delegate, right? Like and then right, because every every bad boss is me. Is, is, is uh, <laughs> do you so micromanage or are you micromanage <laughs> that? That's what I'm trying to not do. Like, yeah, like, I'm going to naturally micromanage from a state of the sensory is bothering me or whatever my fucking okay. demon of the day is, and then I'm going to end up just wearing out that person. I'm trying to I'm trying to look at the story. I'm like, okay. The, the 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 failure point is not going to be Caitlin. It's going to be me. So what's it going to be? I'm going to bother her too much of changing her stuff. And she's gonna be like, then she's going to not want to own it. She's going to not want. She's like, well, I didn't, I wanted to try something, but you're just going to get annoyed by it. So I'm not going to try it. And now I got myself yeah. in an IJ corner where now the thing gets stale, and then the the thing collapses two years later. And this is what Shan rolls her eyes at me. She's like, oh, that's so weird. It's so weird. Your outdated system that you won't let anybody touch finally <laughs> fall apart. And I'm just tired of being that yeah. guy. Yeah. You know? Well, it's so kind of like it, I guess it should be like kind of an iterative process in some way where you like you delegate this way. It doesn't really meet your mark necessarily, and they do it. And then next time something related to that, you kind of budge them a little towards this way, and then it kind of keeps happening in small increments, so you don't freak them out. Yeah. And then eventually, you both, you know, this person gets to, to deep dive in the thing that they want to specialize in, but you also right. are expressing your preferences in a, a gentle way that kind right. of like happens it, uh, over time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cause I finally have been able to see, I, I love the ability to, to be a sprinkler going this way. I love the ability to, to mm -hmm. have responsibility generalization. I love that I can manage 50 fucking things. I think it's great. Now I, I have learned as I've gotten older, I'm just dying on, I, I can't go deep. And so what I, what I see with the specialists that are coming in and saving my life is like, I, I get the feeling of the energy if I could ever, because what am I trying to do in a demon? Say? I'm like, man, I wish, I wish I just had a month off so I could just do this in this one area. It's like, oh, well, that's what they're for. And so for me, it's like, I want people to either help me or get the fuck out of my way and let me do what I'm good at. And that is managing 50 fucking things that are on fire. And so when I realized like, oh, they're trying to do exactly that, you know, Caitlin will like, She'll like send me an email. She'd be like, hey, actually, can you resend me the file, the audio, you know, because I had the wrong mic. She's like, the audio. I'm like, oh, fuck, I knew you were going to catch that. She's like, I'd like to, you know, resend it through. I'm like, I'm like in trouble almost, you know. I'm like, yeah, I'll send no, it the file. Really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I need to, I need to know that like that, because if you're trying to track me, like this doesn't make any sense. Like, hey, let me do what I'm doing. And it's like, okay, let let them do what they're doing this way, you know, and I want to be not the bottleneck and, and let them, uh, let them play around with stuff and figure out their best way of doing it, you know. So, so. How is that, I've got a question for you there. How is that different from wanting to just get a TE done? Because like when, because I'm, I, granted, I'm not like running my own business, but I manage 10 people. And so for me, when I go in, I'm like, all right, guys, this is what we need to do. Here's how I think we need to do it. What do you guys think? Because they're the specialists in what I'm trying to get them to do. So like, I'm more than happy to say, if you get a better idea, do it. Yeah, and right. Letting them do it. So I'm trying to figure out like what is the difference between being a two and being an OI compulsive ass and being, you know, a TE. Oh yeah, right, right. No, I, I see this a lot with um the, the people that come through, like especially the fours. I'll see a lot of fours, um, like like the the other uh, assistant friend I have, she's a four, but she has S E and T E and you know, she's ESFP, she's got S E and T E. So it's just like very the SETE functions are very number two like functions. You know, I saw, mm -hmm. I saw another lady the other day 
or yesterday, I typed her, I haven't sent her results yet to her, and, and she is S-E-T-E. Those are her favorite functions, double masculine. And she's a number two. So it's like a two on top of a two, you know? And so I think the the functions, um, you know, you can have quite a contradiction there. So a lot of a lot of fours that'll come across, they'll they'll have like entrepreneur muscles, you know, more extroverted or S E T E or something like that, or 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 whatever. So yeah, to 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 answer your question, it's like there there's a lot of I'm seeing a lot of like you know threes and fours that'll have businesses and ones and twos that don't mm -hmm. etc and, and what is the 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 differential it just seems to be that the 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 twos or, or the generalization coin is really welcoming that game it's really welcoming the the puzzle of the management game like so for example like like I, i'm just so wiggly all day if there's not a lot of people around because i want to hurry up and do my stuff like 45 minutes and i want to just get up and i want to spend my whole day running around trying to see what everybody else is working on and help them figure yeah. out their stuff and have those conversations. Yeah. And I think, yeah, if, if you're a TI, you're going to like already going to be awkward with the conversations and the people and all that. But then like the, without the two social drive, it's not, it's not the, it's not a fun game, you know, mm -hmm. you're like, Oh God, I have to do this. I can do this, but let's do that. You know? So it does seem to be a big charge out of, do you get a charge out of managing everybody else's stuff or you kind of have to get forced to do it, you know, and then which functions you have makes a big difference. Sure. All right, yeah, we got to get to the questions. Avery, we don't want to keep you here for two. I mean, I would love to keep you here for like 12 hours. Let's talk I mean, to the tribe, yo. Gonna, yeah, let's talk to the tribe. So like, <laughs> I'll start from the top. I So anyone that has submitted questions earlier in the comments, I looked around, I didn't I didn't really see Only any, good questions. If you have some, please resubmit them. I'm just going to start with the top, which happened to be, well, they're not mine, but they're, they're comments from the Facebook group, actually. But the, the first question that I have is, from later gates, I don't know if you, I think she's, oh, yeah. or wait, here, I don't know if it's a he or she. Is. She's they, here around. Well, she. It's a she? Okay, she. Yeah, so I later know gates said that uh, the, oh, let me just post it here. Yeah, there you go. So the systems they've built around home stuff, grocery, shopping, cooking, cleaning, all the mundane stuff we all have to do. It's helpful to hear how you've denied all of that. So like, what, what yeah, what's your, what's your system, Dave? For all the, the Tim Ferriss, all the house stuff. Right, so that's what I'm asking. Yeah. It's, uh, it's hard to sum that up, I think. Right, you probably have quite yeah. a few different systems, I would imagine. But yeah, it, it, I think I think uh, now that's been many years later. It, a lot of it's just priorities. It's just uh, you're, you're looking at the pie chart of your day, and you're like, look, I just don't have eight hours for all this bullshit. I have to get it into one hour, and so you just you continue to constantly make uh, adjustments. I do like to live a life where I get up in the morning and I look for the lowest, heaviest problem on the Maslow's pyramid, and I do know that if we're tripping over tables in the fucking garage, as annoying as that is, as lower down as that is, that if I don't deal with that soon, that it affects everything else. If, if groceries aren't under control, like it's back to like the least amount of pain per decade or whatever. If, if I don't have that low rented stuff really systematized, as much as I think I'm saving time by just one to one it, I end up wasting a lot of time. So it just, it's, and then it's just a never ending. It's just, it's a never ending. And there's a lot of tools and apps and it's just, uh, wanting to do it I, I could get into the details some other time yeah, yeah there's probably a lot of details right but to to, to, to develop it in an eye of 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 that i guess is quite difficult but yeah. just like, i guess it would be just eliminate like what are the problems what are the things that take a lot of time what is something i can do where this doesn't take time right right, right. factor that's meals cool. factor meals are nice or uh, well, what's we, a factor meal it's a, it's like a little ready-made you know healthy meal that, uh, like bulk um, cooking and then yeah okay. steak chicken and the prices if you do the prices out they're about the same of going out getting it yourself cutting it preparing it mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff so those kind of deals uh, i like to have shelves that are very movable so you're not mm -hmm. getting anything locked down so you're always constantly being able to prove actually over here get vacuums that are battery powered um get the ones that have chargers so you're not you're not get hung up waiting for the thing to charge you know just always look around for shit like that yeah, that'd be a fun one to deep dive sometime, or get some sensory and get some some yeah. things photographed. Think all the demon SIs would love to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The details on your specific problems and, and how to handle that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Okay, next one is from Dan. This is the INFJ I mentioned earlier when yeah. I was asking about yeah, your yeah. belt procedure. But uh, yeah. So, uh, which of your type twins you most like to have lunch with? Which, for me, like I don't know how it is for you. I don't have lunch. I don't have lunch with any of my type twins. I know. I <laughs> Let me. 
He's the youth different. I don't know. The, the crystal little guy annoys me so much. That's why I, I, like I, oh, can I tell you a story real quick? I yeah, met yeah. that guy actually. Did you really uh, tell was, me? Yeah, I did. So I was in New York and, uh, and I was visiting and there was this guy who was like selling stuff or whatever. And he came up and started talking to me and he was super nice and everything. And he's like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Do you like comedy? He was like, yeah, sure. And we, I like named off some famous comedians or whatever. He's like, oh yeah, I like them too. And he was explaining how New York works like street wise and all that stuff. And then he was like, hey, do you want to buy a ticket to this comedy show? And I was like, nah, I'm only here for like another hour or something. And I was like, but I appreciate it though. And he goes, Oh, you appreciate it? And he got super fun. He went from being so friendly to being so fucking angry at me. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. Okay. And then, like, I didn't know who this guy was. I, like, six months later, I see him on Joe Rogan. No way. I'm, fine. I'm like, oh, that's that fucking guy who was trying to sell me comedy tickets. No shit. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't know. I, he just seems like a, such an ad. Like, I, okay. So, I like, know, I feel right? like with the NIFIs, you either love, or at least from my, you either love. Yeah, me. right. There's so many NIFIs that annoy the shit out of me, and there's so many yeah. NFIs that I absolutely love. You being one of them, obviously, Gabor Mate, I absolutely love that guy. But man, it's a very polarizing type. For yeah, me I know, right? Reason. I don't know why, but yeah, very much so, very, very much so. I, I, I don't, I, I, I think, I think I would like to go to lunch with one at random. Somebody spin the Rolodex, and then I want to show yeah. up and be like, oh my god, it's Benny Hinn. I get to have lunch with him. <laughs> Benny Hinn would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, yeah. Yeah, he might put his hands on you a little bit. Yeah, he might put the spirit of God in you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. All right, so Benny Hinn. We'll look yeah, that. Benny Hinn. <laughs> it's official. You've heard it in the here first, folks. Dave wants All to right, go. Next question from, uh, from Dan. Also, so like. He thinks his brother is close to Hugo Weaving type twin. I, have y'all typed it? I, I didn't see that. But he can't get back his blast last behind to sit down for a typing video. Any words of encouragement for that particular form? How can we get oh, him to get yeah. back? Yeah, um, the profiles are going to be a pretty big deal. And then I'm going to, I'm I'm slowly starting to take the breaks off of everybody get the hell out of here. You know, I, I, got, I did YouTube playlists this week. I had three days to focus on specializing, get those done. Uh, put, spending some time on YouTube thumbnails, just starting to, um, you know, start to invite people a little bit. Uh, what'll be coming next is redoing the video typing page and then taking it out of the the dungeon. You know, we have it kind of like locked way down where you got to be in here for 90 days and fuck you and all these. It's it's very non-inviting, and so you either got to you know fight to get in and do it, then you got to send a request and maybe we'll send you a payment link. It's just so much bullshit. So it's like th the amount of resistance that a normal person is going to have should be exactly like that. So that's going to start to reverse where we're going to create pages that are more inviting. So it's like basically the bottom line is if you wait for a few months or so, we will have pages that you could just send your friend and then we can do the work from there. Like, hey, man, here's what's going on. Here's what, here's what this is like. Here's the procedure. And then we can kind of do the, in, the inviting on the way in, you know. So I just say wait for a few months if they don't want to do it. If they don't want to fight their way in, you know, understandably so. Gotcha. Okay, great. Next question is from David. Dave, how long do you want to keep making videos? What in ideas do you have? That apply? I, I wonder about that because y'all make yeah. so many videos, many videos in, in every week consistently. And I wonder, like, how do y'all not run out of things to talk about or whatever? I feel like that would yeah. be such a pain in the uh, ass that, that's after, a, after yeah. years of doing this. <laughs> I know. I Well, it's it's back to, like, work. I've never wanted to do videos. I've, I, I, I don't. I don't, I, it's not really my thing. I don't like doing videos, but I do, it, do. You do you like them more now? Like, has it gotten to be a, a nicer thing? I don't. You? I don't look forward to it. I'm. I'm glad when they're okay. done. Uh, I like what sure. they bring. I like the, like the unfair and, advantage yeah. they bring to the to the market. Um, I always will be doing them, but you know, I don't. It's like back to like like I don't like working out anymore. I used to like working out. I, I don't anymore. You know, um, so it's not, it's not it's not anything I really actually like doing. You know, but um, it's just it's too meaningful and powerful. But anyways, to answer your question like um. One thing Shannon and I are are going to start trying to play around with doing is, is, is she's got a second studio. And um, I think we might start doing some videos together, but in our opposite studios, just so I can we can start to because like right now we have like a studio stalemate because it's like, you know, this one here is to want to be able to kind of customize our studios a little bit more as well as change the format where rather than us sitting next to each other, it might be more of like a kind of a podcast conversational thing. Um, but the overall goal is also going to be shanny's doing her shanny live typing shows or her shanny her shanny typing shows where she's got the st on the side you know and then she's also got her shanny her shan live shows as well so that's 
allowing me to not have to do so many videos. So what I would like to do over time is just slowly do less videos and therefore do higher quality videos that uh, I really want to do. So for example, like um, I just recorded Cody Sanchez, um, a, a, a business girl. And God damn, like I started, I found her videos a few months ago and like can't get enough of watching her stuff. And so that'd be somebody of like, and then like usually it's like, oh, I got to go. Now I got to go on to the next one. But like I want to spend more time actually doing the consume and stuff like that. So anyways, just uh, the video formats will be changing very slowly and subtly. You know, Shani and I will have different styles or whatever. And then, um, you know, things like that. But uh, I'd like to, uh, eventually the goal would be having, um, having a uh, full-time video staff that can do, because the videos aren't bad. It's it's the hours and hours up to the video and then the hours and hours afterwards yeah. of, of like all that. Efficiency. Yeah, because I, I wouldn't mind, like if my job was just like, hey, Dave, can you just research, oh, I don't know, one fucking topic for two weeks and then show up and we'll set up the lightings and the wires and the editing yeah. and the post editing and the slide and all the 99% of the bullshit and you just show up and deliver. I'm like, oh, fucking hell yeah, sign me up for that yeah. deal. So that's especially if you like me. just hire a like a consume double observer and be like, yo, help me research this shit. Right. <laughs> so I know what to say, right. so I don't have to do all this consume. Right, <laughs> right, right. Easy. So yeah, there'll be little changes going on this year. It's starting pretty soon, actually. Okay. Great. Do you, okay, a uh, question for me. Do you like I this is something I've wondered since well, since the beginning, because I like I well, I mean, I don't know everything, but uh, I do get the sense that it is a lot of fucking work, especially what y'all did in the beginning where it was like, it was two new videos or something like that on the YouTube channel. Yeah. It was more than, I think more than two on the objective personality um, website and then plus the typings and all of that. And then also back then y'all were sending an audio from both you and Shan and y'all yeah. were also taking calls to, to help people and stuff, which seem uh, like absolutely insane, but y'all managed to narrow it down and it's yeah. gotten a bit easier, right? But like, do you see like, is there a point of burnout? Is there some point where you you see in the future be like, at some point I'll be like, I'm fucking done with this OP shit. <laughs> like, yeah, or do you yeah. feel like this is like a lifelong thing or how are yeah, you Yeah, I, I know. It, it looks crazy from the outside, but it's like all of our burnout stuff is actually behind us. It's it's now, <laughs> okay, it's, that's it's, right. it looks, yeah, it's actually getting easier for us, getting more fun for us. And it's also getting exciting because it's like, when you're overwhelmed with 50 things, but then you get that yeah. down to like nine things, you're like, oh, now I'm getting aggressive. I'm going to get that down to eight. Um, mm -hmm. the, the profiles, I keep mentioning those, those are going to be a big, that's going to be a big shift in us for being able to get stuff. The, the first, the, real quick, let me talk about the profiles. It's uh, the, the first six months, I want to be able to get them into the hands of everybody in the community, everybody that's already been typed. It'd be ideal to be able to have people to have their actual profile. And so you have something that you can be proud of. They're going to be numbered. So mm -hmm. it's like the first one gets to have 001 and then 002. I want to create a log of like, I want to see everybody that's ever been profiled, ever been typed. I want to keep track because people come back like, oh, I got typed like a year ago. I was like, oh, who the hell are you? What type did we get you as? Like, we're like, I want to have like all the SI forever. Like a you database know? for it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For our own, for our own records of um, people being it's proud easier. of like, yeah, I was typed. You know, I was 302. I was back in the old days, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, but so the, the personality profiles are going to be, you know, a little bit personalized to the people. Like it's your name, it's your number, it's your type, it's some notes. Uh, and we'll, I want to have a notes to where I'm like, hey, look, I had a hard time with the sexuals. I was just flat, uh, you know, flat fucking get guessing on double feminine audio or whatever. I want to be able to like make a note for that on mm -hmm. the on the profile and have some customization mm -hmm. to it. But um, ultimately it gives people some real SI of their like, oh my gosh, this is me. This is everything they've been saying in the mm -hmm. videos. This is everything they've been saying in the audios. Here it is all written down. But then also give people something they can, you know, they can rely back on that reading that material, but then also handing that to their friends and family. Like here, here, Jackass, here, this is what I'm saying. This is what the op stuff is about. This is what my profile is about. Here's what I'm trying to say when I'm trying to explain why I have a hard time with F and T here. Read this right here, you know, and then from there, that's going to that already we're starting to see that's what's getting husbands and wives. And they're like, whoa, wait a minute. What's that? I, I want that. Well, how do I do that? You know, and then real quick, that's going to flip over to like b2b because because we're starting to get uh kind of like offers and opportunities of people going like hey this is really good so can you type everybody at my work You're like uh maybe how many people work there a thousand like okay no hold on no not not yet not that that much but if we've got it to where it's uh the profile system um rather than having to do a day body and all that kind of stuff we'll be able to kind of scale those kind of numbers but then you're getting then you're breaking out of the the personality youtube community you're now getting into you know you know the higher people or whatever you want to talk people that are 
that are business owners or working, they're, they're grownups, they're outside, they're not into that personality stuff. And that's when it's going to start to kind of go more from there, you know? So um, that's, that's going to be a pretty big one. Pretty big, pretty, yeah. pretty uh, update there. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm really happy to hear that because I, I was just I was thinking that like you know at least for my own and I like okay at some point they're going to be done with this shit and they're going to want to move on which I would if I if I was in your position but the fact that it's gotten easier and it's 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 gotten a bit better like I think for my own fi I don't know if I even have that but it makes me happy that like okay like Dave and Shannon are just going to be gone one day <laughs> I yeah think I yeah. Would really miss you all so yeah yeah I'm, I'm happy yeah. to hear that at least for the 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 foreseeable you know yeah so, yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's Stan's question. What's the best way to convince someone that ops is not a scam? Oh, yeah, and, go ahead. And where, was, where was Stan? That's down here at the bottom. It, it's funny, the first, the, these, uh, this these years, yeah. yeah, these years up until recently, like, we want people to think it's a scam. We, we like, we, we want your, your logical friends and family that have a lot going on in life. We want them to look at this and be like, this is a membership and they're swearing on YouTube and like, this is, this is a fucking joke. This is weird. Like, yes, it's weird. Go away. Why? Because everything... That Dave just mentioned. It's just me and Shan, and we're doing 50 fucking videos. And Clyde's like, yeah. hey, Dave, here, go on the Oprah show. It's like, it's just us here with a small team. It's gonna, we're gonna get the hug of death. It's gonna kill us. It's gonna overwhelm us if if the scientific community two years ago was like, hey, this is real. Let's go. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So it's pretty like common sense. Like, hey, we gotta mm -hmm. just hey, just uh, I, yeah, I know it's really amazing. So because it is, you know, back to like least pain for the fucking lifetime. Because it is a treasure buried in the field, shut the fuck up about it and just enjoy it while we can. Why it's still small, you're going to be looking back on the good old days. Like, hey, remember when it was just a few yeah. thousand of us doing these fucking podcasts and hanging out the good old days? Like, it's not going to last forever. That's why I keep getting nervous yeah. about because I'm like, it's getting closer. It's getting closer because once that takes off, you know. I think it's been also been pretty clear if you watch a lot of the content is, is like y'all don't give a fuck about the system. And I don't mean you don't give a fuck about it like you, you don't care about it. You But like you're not like. It doesn't feel like it's your baby. Like if somebody attacks it, I feel like y'all don't really care. Like it's just yeah. like this is what we're seeing. If somebody's criticizing, you're like, oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's we too big. Criticism. There's no yeah. like, uh, like with with I see with other systems with people freaking out when they're challenged or whatever. Y'all, it just doesn't seem like y'all are that really because it's a because it's an you observation. I mean? like, I yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, I I appreciate it because it's an observation. Now, if you attack yeah. the fucking F thirty five version five that I built, fuck you. You're gonna have a fucking fist fight. The motor goes here. Like this is my decision. This is how it works. But this is an observation. Like we're debating whether Saturn is there. Like, hey, if you don't see fucking Saturn, you'll eventually see it. I didn't put it there. I just fucking looked up and saw it. masculine, feminine, like introvert, extrovert. Like I didn't create any of this shit. These are just observations. So it's like. For me, if a person doesn't see it, I'm like, I get it. I didn't, I, I'm still trying to have a hard time seeing this stuff. But I also know it's like, yeah, like I, I, I kind of secretly laugh of like, yeah, fucking run your mouth now. Like, run, you know, be the person that talked against, you know, AI or, or, or robots or whatever, whatever that is going to be a coming reality in the future generations. And so I've learned like, hey, this obstacle is pretty intense. You might not want to, you know, get on the wrong side of it or fuck with it because you don't have a problem with me. I don't give a shit. But it's just that this, th these coins will fucking haunt you. Yeah. You know, you'll eventually be 70 going, God, my life really did fall apart. Yeah, in that same it doesn't seem like life. you're personally attached to it, which is a, a mind blowing thing from a TI. If I had developed a system, yeah. everyone, anyone had anything to say about it, I'd be like, they're trying to cancel them. I'd be sending yeah. them angry emails. I'd be like, you know, uh, <laughs> right, just, right. My voice would be mean. speaking, talking about it. You know, they made like the whole yeah. thing. So I'm always impressed. They are like, uh, well, if you disagree with it, maybe you're right. I don't fucking know, but this right. is right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think that's 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 a, for me the biggest thing with with it not being like a, a fucking scam. And y'all aren't even marketing it. Y'all are fucking. Y'all could be doing so much more with your YouTube channel and all that stuff. Y'all don't give a fuck. It's just I like, know. what we do. We're not trying to mass market this shit. It's clear that that's not the case. Right. So we, we, Shani and I joke that we're running the scam of get the hell away from me. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like that. That was in the old about information in the OP website where it's like you were like, yeah, we're going to cuss. We're going to say some like, yeah. wild shit. But that's to scare away the weak. Right. <laughs> it was something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I forget what the exact. Right. Was. Right. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, we're going to be slowly drying that up. Unfortunately, yeah. starting this summer. We're going to start crossing the line where we're going to start dialing down on the swearing. We're going to start dialing down on all the aggressive, uh, you know, insulting stuff. And we're going to start making it a little bit more inviting. I'm going to miss um, that, and, to be honest. And, 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 like and what I'm nervous about is I want to have control of the floodgates. I want to, 
What I what I am the most afraid of is the takeoff. That's honestly my deep core fear because I had that in RC and I've seen this before in other businesses. And this is what this is, is that yeah. if it's too much too soon, that sounds really great, but it's really not. It really fucks up no, your business. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have to have the infrastructure to support that. And you have right, to have a lot right. more people probably. In so there. I want to slowly start expanding out and and not have a takeoff until until I think there's like 20 people here. Until the, the business is at a point to where we have systems that can train systems and, and replicate. And that's that's more of a um uh, just a just a business challenge, you know, which I, I swear to God I thought I was better at business than I really am. Back to the dunning curve, you know, curve. It's like business. Business is fucking easy. Like now business yeah. is fucking hard. This is taking longer than I thought. But we're getting business there. Like we're getting figured out. Parts for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So we got our, a couple questions from our boy Habib. Of course you know Habib. You've been on his his channel quite a yeah. bit. I know Habib, a uh, super cool guy, and he wants to know what are some of the major growth transformations you've seen heard people have from learning their OP type? Oh, oh there's gosh, probably right. a lot there. To sum that up would be yeah, 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 right. No, I, I do think about like, yeah, this is where like most companies will have like a testimonial page because that's just what I'm it, it, it's what I'm getting a lot of. I, I think the, the biggest pattern I'm seeing is is years. I think it's like two to four years. Uh, a lot of times it just feels like a a crop of plants of like the, the the people in the early generations that are, that are here in 2018, 19, 20, to where I think uh, you know they they get in, they see their type, they wrestle with their type, they disagree with their type, whatever. They eventually get settled, and then they just kind of get quiet for a couple of years. From our perspective, we don't hear from them, and then we start to see as they're they're getting older, we start to really see uh, that kind of the the freedom. I guess specifically, what I hear a lot is exactly what I'm, I'm hoping to hear. It's what I feel in my own life. Is I hear people will tell me their stories like, oh, yeah, this last year was the hardest year for me. I went through this, went through this, went through this. And the obstacle was so helpful because I knew what I understood what was going on. And, and I knew it was fair. Yeah. And I knew all these fears yeah. weren't real. So rather than going down depression for 10 years, I was really sad for like three weeks. And then I, I moved on with it. I'm like, oh, God, totally. thank God. So a lot of that, you know. If I could give my own <clears throat> like mini testimonial, I, I'd imagine pro probably it's probably a lot of IPs have felt this way. But like I think knowing the code and getting your type back all of us subconsciously know what our issue is. I feel like, you know, yeah, deep right. down there's like, you know, there, there's an issue, right? You may not be able to, to, to put it into words or you might not be able to narrow it down, but I feel like OP helps you kind of narrow it down. Like for me being demon FE, I thought so many, for so many years, there's just something wrong with me. Maybe like I'm some kind of weird sociopath or I have like some whatever. And like, for me as an IP, this showed me, like no, actually, like there are a lot of people that feel the same way that you do. Yeah, right. And it was and 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 you can narrow it down. You know the problem, but then the problem is is like you have not been paying attention to this part of your cognition, which is like basically, you know, how other people feel, other people's perspectives, these sorts of things. And so it helped me so much. Like instead of just feeling like I'm just an asshole or whatever, like it felt like okay, like here's here's the issue. Like you know, there's an issue, but here it it narrows it down to a point where here is the issue concretely described where you can actually work on it and fix it. And yeah, there's right. a, like, a, there's a sort of validation there and there's a sort of comfort there where it's like, okay, I feel like I have the tools to, to fix this now instead of just feeling like there's something wrong with me. Yeah. For me. Yeah. And totally I feel like good. OP has helped more than any fucking stupid self-help book I've ever read or whatever. Yeah. It, it's, it's a thing that completely like has, has changed my life in, in, in so many ways where I just like, man, if I, if this was 2024 without OP, I would be a completely different guy. Oh, yeah, Easily. right. It'd be pretty scary. You know what yeah. I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I would still be like, I mean, probably would have made some progress, but I'd still be pretty lost. And this has opened up my I'm mind seeing. to not only a more concrete way of looking at my problems, but also an expansion and understanding other people's problems and knowing, like, I had no idea observers exist. I had no idea people had observer problems. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that was a thing. And to be <laughs> able to, to really just at the NI of it to understand, like, how diverse we all are in our cognition and personality and like what people are dealing with and like how different we all are like that helps yeah. so much. Yeah. And like I would not be the person I am today without OP easily. Like I can say yeah. that with hundred percent certainty. So yeah, man, thanks a lot yeah. for that. It's, it's definitely true, dude. I, I, yeah. uh, the way you're describing it, I just picture like it just takes it from this giant monster that is yep. chopped down to now I have thousands of problems. And then there's some mm -hmm. negative to that because now I'm like, oh my God, I have so much more work to do than I realized. But you look at any one of those those thousands of jobs, I'm like, ah, fuck, that's doable. Ah, that's doable. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know what I'm saying?
Yeah. yeah. Really got it down, especially the, the ISTP fears video is what did it for me before I got typed. Uh, I watched that video and I'm like, oh, fuck. That's me <laughs> making this stupid clock book <laughs> that yeah. nobody gives a fuck about. <laughs> and like I had a moment for a couple of days. I was like, my bed. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that was my <laughs> process. And then when I got my type back, it made sense. But like before that, I was like, like, I think they're right, actually. And, like, I have to like process this now that that's me. And like, I even sent it to my ex girlfriend. I'm like, does this relate to me? She's like, that is you 100%. Like, wow. <laughs> anyway, it's so good. Yeah, I understand why people think it's like uh, relating to the last question, how people think it's a scam and stuff. Because, like, I mean, it's most personality systems are bullshit. Uh, but like, this is, uh, I know, I know I've read most of these personality things, but this one has been. Uh, magnitudes uh, order of magnitudes greater than yeah i think a lot of people are trying to process the the rightful fear that they have as well mm. and i i think i think um you know the average person the one thing that i do worry about is that is um that this tool uh if it's if it's not in the hands of the people if people don't know how to use it like it's a, a bad guy could use this for some pretty aggressive stuff, which is it's still oh, totally. going to happen in our generation. You, you know, mani you can manipulate the fuck out of people if you know like their type and their fears yeah. and stuff like that. You totally prey on that, you know. But like yeah. that's with any technology, whether it's nuclear technology or whatever, it's always got right. its bad side. Unfortunately, I know definitely that. Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm thankful for the years of head start we all get before you know Facebook or or yeah. some government uses it or whatever. But it feels like AI is kind of on this kind of stuff, anyways. It's gonna that, figure everything out anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyways, All right. great stuff. All right. So another another question from our boy Habib: What do you f I like most about doing these pod? Do you like doing these podcasts? Yeah, the, probably the, the probably the play energy. You can be like honest, a, by the way. You don't. Yeah, like yeah. I, I can. Tell yeah, uh, I don't like this chair. Uh, I'll tell you that. Uh, uh, the, I don't like the, my the, fucking chair either. I need to get a new one, honestly. Yeah. Uh, just the play energy, you know, like, like I'm, I'm not, you know, not super against play, I've, you know, play third or whatever, but just the exchange, the play energy, the back and forth. Um, I, I feel like uh, there's a huge void of not really sharing much in our personal life. I remember back in the RC days, we had we had much more, uh, you know, we had, we had a live camera. So we had like a, a, a live video, like at our workspace 24 seven, it's like all, all day, every day. And then we would do live shows all the time. It was just like a regular thing. And so there's, it was just a lot more um interacting with people and kind of keeping up what's going on in our life and stuff so i kind of miss that aspect of it you know so the live shows or the the um that what are these podcasts or whatever they do yeah. feel like for me it's like an avenue to have a off the record people personal play energy uh flow you know tension exchange etc so mm -hmm. yeah i like them you know all the same yeah podcasts yeah. are really nice in that regard right yeah i like all anything right. live you know live live communication stuff all right. Yeah. Thank you, Habib. Uh, we got some more questions from Sammy J. Are there hey, any Sammy. small projects, tasks the community can help you a lot with for free or projects that you would take a long time but someone could chip away at over a long period of time? There's helpful Sammy. She's always super helpful. <laughs> really great. She's always been there supporting us. Uh, that is probably going to be happening. I feel like the more I can work with Caitlin and, and the other people here kind of helping out, then the more I can get stuff kind of out of the, you know, the Dave, the, the black hole of Dave land into areas where more and more people can help. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think over time, we'll be able, be able to do that more. We're, we're finding too, like, uh, we're able to now work with part time people, you know, people that, that live far away, they just do one or two things. Because um, a lot of the stuff is the consistency. It's hard. It's hard to get a project where you can just like throw it out there and then they throw it back. Because you got you got to have like logins. You got to have like access to emails. You have to have access to Google Docs. You gotta like you gotta meet with Shan. You gotta meet with me. There's a lot, like everything's all tangled up. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to have something to where people aren't too, you know, in in the actual business, you know. But uh, getting there. Great. Yeah. Well, I think I think that was probably our. Yeah, that's the last question. Yeah. Nate, you've been kind of quiet. Any, any? I've just, I, I've yeah. had thoughts, but I've just been listening. Okay. Me, uh, All good. All right. All right. Great. Well, I, I guess that's that's all we got. So, like, yeah, Dave. Uh, I mean, we'll in the live stream, but we'll we'll talk for a minute if you have time. But like, yeah, sure. yeah thank you again for uh, so much for coming on. Uh, we always love speaking with you. It's been a long time for us as well. I think we we haven't talked in maybe a couple of years or something. So it was really nice to see you here again. And it, it's always really lovely um, talking with you and, and 
having you here. So yeah, thanks so much, man. Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for setting this up. It's fun. Yeah. Great. All right, everyone. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming uh, to Bros of All People. We'll have another episode at some point, probably next month, talking about whatever. Uh, but thanks, everyone, for coming on and, and, and contributing and, and leaving comments and everything. We love all you guys, and uh, we'll see you all next time. All right. See you, everybody. Right. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Yeah. All right. The stream.